Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Why, what is this? Well, this is the Painters Motivating Painters end of month review. Painters Motivating Painters is our Facebook hobby group and every month we encourage folks to post one, no more than one uh, submission into this if they like. Uh, and then at the end of the month, I will review it and offer feedback. As always, um, I ask that you provide uh, some detail as to what you're looking for. Uh, so please do uh, be specific as to how I can help you take your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to be looking through everything for the April uh, event. Uh, so obviously this has been a, this is a busy month. This is the busiest month ever. Uh, we're approaching the limit of what I can review in a month and still remain sane. Uh, there was more than 80 submissions this month. Uh, just to do the math for you there, if I spent two minutes a piece on each of them, uh, that would mean that I would be here for about three hours. Uh, so I do, I, I will have to be quick with this. And as always, there is a video I will link down below where I go into greater detail. Sometimes I might just direct you at particular hobby cheating videos or stuff like that. Uh, I do want to give everybody their time, but you know, there's only so much feedback I can give before my brain melts out of my ears. Uh, that being said, I am excited. There's some really, really great stuff this month, so I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to it. Uh, so if you want to join us on your hobby journey, why look down below. There's a link to the PMP. Go ahead and click that. Uh, you do have to answer all three questions, all of them. If you don't answer all of them, you don't get approved to get in. It's really that simple. Uh, so with that being said, uh, oh, and I'd like just to... to close that out. Uh, we'd love to have you along, whether you're uh, just starting out or whether you're a longtime master, you're more than welcome here. Everybody has their own place on their hobby journey. And the ultimate purpose and, and goal of this community is to just help everyone take their next step, whatever that may be. Okay. So with that, let's get into it. Start off with Benjamin here. Uh, first series display piece, feedback on his overall color composition, as well as his non-metallic gold. Uh, yeah. So I think overall your color composition is fine. It's a little bit intense with the purple. That's the main problem. Um, more purple needs to be up top. So like I would have changed these straps to actually be this same purple. You have a really intense color here that isn't balanced on the miniature up high. That's probably your biggest problem. Um, the contrast is in general pretty good. Like when I look at the skin, I see lots of nice shadows across the piece. Everything's looking like it's contrasting how it should. The non-metallic runs from black to white. I can see the soft tones in the skin. So I think that looks pretty nice. Um, the Now on the gold non-metallic metal, yeah, it's probably the part that's a little too flat. Your steel non-metallic metal is solid, but the gold non-metallic metal needs to run a little higher, more contrast, more number one value. Uh, so, oh, shorthand for this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just defining general color segments, one being the brightest, three being your mid-tone, five being the deepest. So when I say you need more one, I mean more highlight. If I say you need more five, you need more shadow. Uh, and in general, I think you could use a little bit of both here, uh, especially light catches and light dots, things like that on the gold. The silver you pushed a lot better. You used a lot of blue interference color on there, which I think is fine. Uh, I think that looks interesting. It sets the blades apart from the armor as the armor is a much more soft and subtle uh, desaturated blue. So, but yeah, I think the gold is where you've got your opportunity for improvement. It needs to push higher into the contrast. But overall, this is good. You may want to think about working some other colors into your skin tone uh, on, on uh, a miniature like this. Pushing pinks and purples and things like that into orc skin will often make them feel uh, a little more alive as we would recognize it. So there you go. But great stuff. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Cal, who brings us uh, Eliminators from his Raven Guard chapter going for a camo pattern. Yeah, I think overall the camo pattern works well. I like the little splotches. I think it's really good. Um, if you're going for a tabletop standard here, I think you've certainly uh, achieved that. I think they look nice. Um, you could push the, the reflectiveness on the goggles a little more and have some little little brighter light catches up in the corner uh, to kind of show the reflectiveness of them. I think actually the thing that jumps out to me the most is on the snow. It looks a little gloopy still. Uh, I would go back and check out um, uh, hobby cheating like 92 whatever realistic snow bases to 91 or 92 somewhere in that area because um, it'll help your snow stop from just looking like that gloopy pace that's kind of put down and then 
why is there a bunch of snow here and no snow right next to it? That just doesn't tend to be how snow actually works. Uh, so I would say give a look at that. Uh, but on the whole, I think these guys look good. Well done. Okay, next up, Abel. Uh, don't know if you already posted this one. You did not. Uh, trying hard to challenge yourself in practicing non-metallic metal and limiting is your color choices. Sure. So composition and that. So the uh, first thing that jumps out at me is I think the... Um, I actually want to go to this picture because I think this is really nice. Uh, this will just let us have more conversation. So the... Um, uh, the sword is good. We need to smooth out some of that. Check out maybe my painting smooth white video. I think that might help you out a little. Uh, in general, it looks like some of the paint got a little dry here in some places where it feels like things got chalky and it's usually where white's involved. So you may want to look into something like a white ink. Uh, so the silver sort of reflectiveness, I think, works mostly fine where you have it. Uh, I think you do need some darker colors in like the moon symbol on his helmet and stuff like that. I think your biggest opportunity really is with the gold non-metallic metal. Here, it's more just yellow. We don't have enough one and two at all, so there's really not enough uh, highlights. There's not enough of that being captured. Uh, there's also, in most places, not enough shadow. So you're really operating almost completely in the three and four range here, and non-metallic has to run the full contrast, just like you did on the sword here, right? Uh, you need to really pop those highlights, make sure you have those beams of light. Every shape has a different way that light is going to catch on it. And so you just want to break it down to its constituent shapes. Is it a cylinder? Is it a globe? Is it a square, flat panel? You know, whatever it happens to be. Um, that will sort of guide you as to how you want to create those, those highlights on there. Uh, so that would be my biggest piece of advice for you to push is more tonal variation in that metal, bring it up to a higher value contrast. Okay, uh, next up, Apollo, who did Darren Latham's masterclass. Uh, and basically, he's uh, looking for some color uh, translation and basing feedback. So, sure. Uh, so, I think you did fine It's on, on Darren's thing. There is a big problem, though, with your base. So, let's talk about basing. I'm a fan of a big base. One thing you generally want to avoid is a base that is as tall as the mini. Uh, and this is pretty darn close, like if it wasn't for this thing over his back. The actual big problem, though, with the base is this. This is no good. Um, because this has a lot of yellow. Yellow has a high uh, lumosity. And this is way brighter than anything on your miniature. Just let's all do an experiment together. Relax your eyes. Look at this mini. Don't focus on anything. Just let your eyes go, go slack and sort of, you know, unfocused. What's the only thing you see? For me, it's this, okay? That's a problem. We can't even see the figure anymore. This this figure would be 10 times stronger if this was just mud, okay? So it's okay to use some, some bright colors and goopy stuff in the base, but then you need to make sure that you're still drawing attention up here. And this is just so much of this. Like if you had had a thin crack of it running along the side here and maybe dripping down, and then maybe you had another couple bits up on these skulls up here, so we had a nice compositional line running through the piece great we'd be a plus you know what i mean then we'd, we'd, we'd be aces uh but as it stands that that just takes away from it now as to the figure itself i think you did a very nice job of translating uh and following along with darren there um i think you could push the highlights on the greens a little more uh especially up by the helmet um so if you watch darren really focuses in on that single eye and on this area here um, because he really does want to make sure that the attention is drawn up there. And right now, you were able to get the highlights higher on the feet than on the head. And the reason that was that because you had an edge there and you edge highlighted it. So now, again, we're drawing attention away from the face where we want to and into the uh, the lower legs. So that's kind of my quick thoughts. Uh, you know, pop up the head. Honestly, I would, um, you know, like the, the base is the base at this point. So it is what it is. But for the future, avoid stuff like this, where you have this super bright thing drawing attention away from your mini. Okay, next up, Kyle. Uh, didn't notice until he took the pictures. The chest seems more pink than red. Uh, sure. So, so basically skin tone and the hair. Yeah, let's start with the hair. That's actually the easy one. So it's you want to focus in more on still creating the light striations of the hair. Like... Hair has a halo. Hair has light in certain places. You've still highlighted this quite evenly throughout, okay? And you want, like, this should be more in shadow. This should be a super popped highlight. There should be a highlight here where it's cascading over her shoulders and then on some of these edge pieces where it's popping way up, kind of a light line across here as well. 
Um, go look at like a, a Vidal Sassoon or a Pantene hair dye bottle and look at how they construct the highlights and the shadows on there where they take a picture of a model in perfect lighting conditions and then Photoshop it to, to even, you know, perfect all of that. That's what you, you're, you're trying to aim at. Th those are like perfect lighting conditions and they give you really good guides as to what it should be. Now, as to the skin, the, you know, the reason that it, um, that it feels more pink is because you did work like you definitely you clearly have a slightly different blend up on the the top here but also it's because you you so breasts aren't orbs that just stick out like they don't have a shadow line right here like that that's so deep at the top of the the breast right this is this goes out smoothly um like there there's a there's a shadow up here by the collarbone generally because your your chest will kind of fall in under your collarbone which protrudes um, so, but you don't want to make a line all the way around. It should kind of start here and come down, right? Uh, in the center of the torso. This should be more of a smooth out. Um, you can have a little bit of shadow push towards the edge where the, the, um, where the chest itself is falling away, right? Like that is to say under, around the rib cage. Uh, but it shouldn't be one there. And I think the addition of the extra red and stuff you put in there for that shadow is what's causing that. Uh, so yeah, those would be my couple pieces of advice for you, Kyle. I hope that helps. Okay, next up. Uh, so this is, uh, Benji and he wanted to know, uh, he said he was inspired by the iron drills I did. Well, thank you very much. It's very nice. Uh, but he's looking for something a little more realistic and he, he wants to see some, uh, vibrancy. Sure. So, you know, I, I know somebody mentioned blood effects. I'll be honest. I'm not down with blood effects. I mean, you can if you want, but they should be pretty minimal. The reason you have a lack of vibrancy here is because we have a, everything is desaturated. The blue is highly desaturated. The green is highly desaturated. Everything is desaturated. So that's fine. Um, honestly, the, the right answer here is probably what I did, which is to add a little bit of some orange here. Like your flames are white. You, you use the same flame pattern I did. Just making those actually a, a sort of orange yellow flame would add a little bit of kick back in. Um, and just kind of scattering a little bit of those pieces around. They could be minimal, like in the little, you know, re re recessed almost flame pieces, little licking flame pieces, holes of the armor here, stuff like that. Just a little pop colors like that on an otherwise desaturated mini spaced evenly around can do a huge amount of work. Now, as to here, uh, one of the things you can do with the face as well to add more uh, pop to it is more color. Like we don't have enough color in there. The, the addition of purple to the lip is good. But again, reds and pinks around the nose, um, around the the um, uh, the ears, you know, up here in the top of the uh, the eyebrows, anywhere where there would be a lot of blood. Okay, you have a little bit of like this desaturated red here. Push that more into like almost a a, a pink color, honestly. Uh, same with under the eyes, by the way. Um, because wherever there's sort of these capillaries close to the surface, even if the orc himself doesn't actually have red blood, which who knows whether he does or doesn't, uh, he can if you want, he's your orc, um, the, uh, the reality is it'll, it'll make it feel more alive, and it'll make the face feel more vibrant with those kind of colors in there. So I hope that helps. Overall, they're looking really cool. I, I love the, the super desaturated, like almost denim blue. I think it looks good. All right, uh, Jeffrey Bryant uh, basically was looking for something that didn't lack tonal variation. Is chibi uh, areas for improvement? He wanted to look at the uh, flesh tones um, and uh, yeah, and started looking for feedback on the green because it doesn't come off as cold. So let's talk about this. Uh, so your areas where you still need to push your tonal variation, especially on a chibi, is in the hair. Um, hair needs to, again, see previous comments about looking at a Pantene bottle. With chibis, you just want to make it look like that. It needs to come up to, like, white, basically, at the highest highlight with a chibi. Um, and so there should be, like, a light halo here running down both sides of her part. And then probably, you know, near that on the sides, like where the, where the curve out is going. Now, why does the green feel warm? Because you added yellow, right? And yellow is a warm color. Uh, and so you, you've went for that. Now, if you were, if you want to go to a cold green, add like a white gray or a white blue or something like that and turn it into a more mint green. Mint green is perceived as very cold. You could also use like maggot white from Reaper or something, which is a slightly green infused. You could use duck egg green from uh, Vallejo game 
or model error, sorry. Uh, you know, all those sorts of things. But that that's why it felt more warm. Now, that being said, I actually like it feeling more warm. I don't, that was me telling you how you'd make a, uh, a cold green, but I actually think it looks nice uh, with the warm green. You, you created sort of circles of alternating color. I wouldn't change it. It, it's better like this than it would be if it was cold, to be completely honest. Uh, so to me, I think that's, that's good. As to the skin tone, um, you do want to still push some more of that, especially around the face. The cheeks have no color in them. Like again, chibis need to be everything times 10, you know, where you're really, really expressing all the color. So, uh, I would look at, um, making sure that you have, uh, you know, like some red and pink tones in the cheeks, uh, some more colors in and around the eyes. Like right now it's kind of brown, but where's my purples? Where's my more reds? Where's my, uh, magentas and stuff like that? That's what I want to see in there. So that would be my advice. Okay. Next up, uh, Hakan said, uh, this is an honorable mention and he didn't get to get feedback from the judges. And so he thought, Hey, why not? Uh, okay, cool. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I think the piece is, uh, really nice. Um, so my, my best advice for it is one, I feel like the feet, and this is going to sound crazy because I always talk about this, but I feel like the feet are a little too dirty because this is supposed to be really big. Like in scale, this thing is actually huge. Like it's standing across a four lane highway. The amount of dirt that's up on it, that's coming up onto it, is actually a bit extreme by the standards of, especially if it's walking on concrete. I understand there's dirt around it. I can see the dirt on the side of the road. But it's kind of not, like, it almost feels like you the dirt's blown up too high. Now, the other thing I'll say is that it just doesn't have enough pop and contrast. It's rather flat. So, like, the tonal variation is lacking in places where we could be doing more interesting things. Like these vents, where you know, darkness in between, more darker in between the lines of the vents, brighter edges on the edge of the vents, lighter edges here. Um, you know, this big gun it has, like it feels like the gun shouldn't be in this, whatever this barrel is, could be a different tone or color than the rest of the body, right? So we want to make sure that we're uh, that we're creating visual interest across the piece where I have a reason to keep moving. The other thing I would say is you could go a little farther with weathering, scratching, stuff like that to make it a little more interesting. If this thing is that dirty and you also seem to be doing some oxidation on the copper, then you probably want to uh, also then have some more chips or scratches or streaking even or something like that. You've got some. I can see some rub around the edges and things like that. You could go a little farther. And especially with things like big machines, streaking is usually a good call because if this thing's walking around, it's probably in the same position most of the time. Like it's flat like this. So right, water would collect and then run down it. So that's what I would really recommend. Okay, all right. All right, so uh, Derek, uh, working on his non-metallic metal and his flesh tones. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look. So I feel like the, well, let's start with the flesh tones. That's the easy one. We definitely need more tonal variation on the flesh tones. Like, the flesh tones are still very flat. More reds, more purples, more highlights. You, like, we're basically in a 2-3, and that's it. There's no 4s, there's no 5s. I don't have enough pink. The lips don't stand out enough. The, you know, the eyelids and, and under the eyes and around the side of the head, under the hair, all that sort of stuff. So, if you go watch, you know, any of the recent flesh videos I've done, like how to paint uh, ruddy flesh or pale flesh or all that kind of stuff... Um, you'll see what I'm talking about as far as that goes. So uh, just in general, we need a lot more color and life in the skin tone. Now onto the metal. Um, so the general contrast is correct. And so what I want to actually direct you to here is where we need to, to work is in reflective shadows. So non-metallic metal doesn't just go one, two, three, four, five. So let's, we're just going to, because it's the easiest thing to do. Let's look at her, like her chest here and her knees. Okay. So you did it on this knee where you have like your light and then it goes down into uh, dark. And then we've got this light here again at the bottom. Looks here too, but we didn't do it up here. Nor do we do it on the side of the arm or in these other places where we go into deep shadow. So that would be the first thing I would say is it looks like you captured it a little, but whenever you, you know, there's, there's secondary reflections on most shapes. 
cylinders and globes especially, right? So, or spheres as it were. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure you're, you're pushing into that area. Now, beyond that thing that jumped out at me, I think, uh, you know, in general, this is a very cold non-metallic gold, which I think is fine. Uh, I would still probably smooth some of those blends down a little bit. You know, some glazing of your three over all the tones would kind of help to draw it together a little bit. Uh, and then from there, the only thing you'd want to think about is, is light catches, whether or not you want off light shadows. Uh, so like, or sorry, not off light shadows, like shadow based off. <laughs> Let me see if I can explain this. Uh, within the shadows, there can be flicks and catches of light uh, is basically the idea. If you go look at um, Darren Latham's blog and look up his non-metallic metal when he painted uh, Sanguinius or whatever, uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. He has a whole article on non-metallic metal that I still reference to this day and consider one of the gold standards. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, uh, of how to paint non-metallic. So uh, go and check that out. But overall, this is really good. I mean, I think you're definitely in the right space. You're, most of the, sh the shapes look like they're highlighted correctly. So now it's just a matter of continuing to push and refine. Okay, next up, uh, Alexand uh, Alexandru. A uh, few hours of painting, uh, interested in the overall look, the eyes. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons with the eyes is we don't, we need it to be darker around the eye itself and brighter in the center. So when you want a glowing eye, go back and watch my glowing eye tutorial. The key is to go from bright to mid to very dark to a faded mid, right? Now, overall, though, for, you know, a couple hours, I think this guy's fine. It's fun, cool snake, good edges. He's got patterns. I mean, your obvious place where you could go is the bones could have a little more texture and, and visual interest going on right now. They're kind of flat and just bone colored. Uh, yeah, so that's what jumps out at me. Hope that helps. Okay, uh, Johnny, uh, back with the Trader Guard, missing something with the mud dirt. Yeah, I, I think the mud dirt just feels too samey is basically my answer there. Um, everything in here is kind of all just in each other's business. So some separation of elements in some places, especially on the guys, where I know you want them to be dirty and kind of, you know, in the muck and mire, but the individual elements that aren't dirty, like their helmets and their face, and this should still be more darkly separated with shadowed and light transitions. You want like light lines against dark against light and that kind of thing. Within the mud itself, uh, I mean, I think it looks good like a bunch of mud, but you could go farther with some other color tones in there, things like that. So, you know, having uh, a little more of like reds and purples and greens mixed in there a little more, I think would help. Also mixing up uh, even some more smaller grit texture. I really like these large chunks you're using, but having a little bit of like smaller grit, almost like a sand grit more scattered in, might also help to include, you know, sort of make you a little more comfortable with the feeling there. So hope that helps. Okay, uh, next up, Damien. Uh, basically looking for feedback on the skin, weapons, and the overall color scheme. Sure. So we'll talk about the skin first. Uh, so I think with the skin... It's, I'm fine with this as an alternate color take, but we're not really painting skin. So, like, it's still too monochromatic. Um, skin needs to have a pretty wide variation of color. It's not reflective metal, but it's not far off because skin has a natural sheen to it uh, and tends to have a lot of different hues. So it, has, it needs to have a tonal variation of, of hue as well as value. In other words, many colors as well as dark to light. And, you know, with, with this kind of like purple scheme here going up into this kind of blue or whatever, you need to more shapely define the muscles. I and mean, you had a question about like how to draw them together. Well, like up top you have, you go to your three or your two, and then there's still ones out on the tops of the individual muscles. So you have to run the whole sort of gamut. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would really what's lacking here is we don't have enough sort of two or one at all and our transition into the five goes like three five it's very sudden of a jump so working it through where you're bringing in more subtle soft shadows and then working up highlights and honestly i would just use a, a, a pale flesh tone or a sunny skin tone or something like that as your highlight color uh in the purple like you can still keep it purple just mix that into the purple to create more highlights okay now, as to the weapons, uh, I think they're fine. I think overall you'd probably want to get, these are very rough weapons, these things to paint, these corn weapons. But overall, I would recommend, you know, you want to like define the images a little bit more, make sure they're a little more clean as far as like 
what's an edge, make sure your edges are more sharply highlighted, make sure there's more clearly defined shadows. Just go and look at the all the videos I have on like working with true metallic metal and that's going to be your guide there, but you want that to be more clean, more more easily readable to the eye. So, there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, uh my, my Let's go with that. Uh, okay, uh, he says, I'm a beginner, one mini fully painted and several in basic. I was trying to paint the skin but failed, so I decided to make a dirty look. <coughs> sure. So, I appreciate the black and whites, by the way. My, my best advice is don't worry too much. I mean, if this is your first fully painted mini, you, you're welcome to the beginning of your journey. You've got so much to learn. Um, yeah, I mean, what I would focus on at this point, yes, there certainly needs to be more tonal variation, but honestly, I'll tell you one thing. I would... I would honestly grab figures with more definition because you will learn volumes better when you're working with better sculpts. That's just the reality. Like, you, b b worse sculpts and worse, like grabbing something like Green Army Men or something like that, which is what this is sort of the equivalent of, it's just, it's going to be hard because they're so squishy and squidgy and lacking in proper detail. It becomes very hard to actually make them look good. Uh, so my best advice for you is to honestly just keep painting, work on your brush control. It looks like you're, you're pretty clean, which is good. If you can stay clean right now, uh, you have good, you, you know, you have that kind of control over placing your paint where you want it. So I think that's a great start. Um, where you want to go is largely in working with blending and how you get your, your highlights and shadows mixed together. So my big challenge for you would be, you know, work on, continuing to refine your brush control and doing that through blending. Uh, you don't have to go spend a ton of money on figures, but even just grabbing like some old eBay, you know, plastic sculpts that are pretty nice that you can get usually in bulk from something like a GW line or anybody like that, frankly, it doesn't have to be GW, but you know, something like that. You can often find people selling off just like big lots of kind of unwanted older sculpts that are no longer in the game, pretty cheap. That would be my recommendation for you because uh, just having the crispness of detail there is really going to be a big help. So I hope that helps. All right, Dan, uh, largest, most complicated mini he's attempted. Uh, okay. And uh, general feedback on areas where he can improve. Sure. Uh, so let's, I want to touch on one of his last comments. I also wanted to muddy his feet, but I, but I was worried I would spoil it. Don't ever be worried you'll spoil it by making it more realistic like that. You can use pigment, use a little wash, just do a little stippling. You can be super light, super thin, and you can make it happen. So, and then you can slowly build up to like real paint and mud around the very bottom. You can't ruin anything, okay? It's paint. If you don't like it, you just paint back over that area real quick. It, it would only take a few minutes. It feels like it would take longer than it does, but that's because you're looking back at the whole project of how long it took you to do the whole thing and not at the three minutes you spent on, you know, that the, you would spend fixing one foot, right? Now, at any rate, onto this. Uh, sure, I think overall it uh, works well. Uh, you know, things that I would push on is things like the snail shell could have a little more texture, a little more variation. Uh, I like some of the shadow. It can go farther. I think the purple works really well. I like some of your shadows in the purple. I think that looks nice with the sort of pink tones added in. I like uh, I like Horticulus on back. I think he looks nice in that purple tone. So I think that looks really good. Uh, the bright yellow Nurgling, I'm not too sure about. I think I would have brought him into the same green as everything else. Uh, there, the, the bright yellow is basically that Nurgling and then the two eyes of the snail. And it's kind of too attention grabbing. As uh, Like I said earlier in this, Yellow is a really, really powerful color. If you're going to use it, it needs to be balanced. So, for example, if you were going to do that with the yellow, then, like, Horticulus's eye should have been yellow, and this thing back here should have been yellow. That way I had lots of reason to move my eye across the, move my eyes across the miniature like this. You would have created a nice line for me, right? Like, choo -choo. Um, but as it stands now, this is very distracting. Uh, so... Uh, overall, think about things like texture on stuff like the leather that he's on, maybe on the shell where you could use like some hashing type of stuff, just like, you know, quickly hashing with your brush to add a little bit of extra life and interest. Uh, but on the whole, I think this is good. I think this is really nice. Uh, keep pushing the contrast, keep taking it up higher, and uh, yeah, you're doing great. All right, uh, Andy, uh, third miniature overall. A lot of people who are just starting out, that's great. 
uh, uh, last time he said he needed the armor, needed more shadows. The non-metallic steel sword needed more mid-tones. Uh, okay, sure. So, let's take a look. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like this is pretty solid. You see, you know, the blue is a nice color to work with. I feel like you've got some good variation here. Uh, yeah, when we look at the black and white, I think that looks really nice. I think we could push a little bit more shadow here on the rear side of the leg, but, I mean, there's, like, little minor quibbles I could have here and there. For the most part, I think this is a good marine. If you're not going into, like, a non-metallic marine and you want them to be kind of a flat color, I think you're in the right place here. Uh, the red feels a little flat. So, much like last time, you know, your blue is good, but then it's you've got the red of the gun and the red of the line on his helmet, and that doesn't have the same pop. Uh, now, as the sword, again, we could still go farther with it. It definitely needs more one and two. It's way too much like three, four, five right now. It needs to go much, much farther on pushing the highlights. And frankly, I would say the same with the, the gold, by the way, on the Aegis and the little bejangly jangly on his belt and such. Um, his little reliquary or whatever. Uh, all of those things feel like they could, they need to come up more ones and twos. That's where you need to be going. Uh, and, and learning exactly that light placement, having that stuff is good that you're, you're starting out with really tough stuff. So, um, it's good. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot, which is helpful. Okay. Next up, Pauly, uh, many where he decided to push as much as he's able, Verge applying the last step, uh, where can he improve his contrast? Sure. So I saw all the blood on these guys, and on the we'll, we'll see what he's looking at here. Hold on, let's get to this. There you go. So this is his other stuff. I will just say this is too much blood. I get what you're going for with the viscera, but this would be better off as like light spatter up on the shields than as these actual streaks. Personal taste. It's just you're undoing so much work with that and making it so much the central thesis of the the mini. Uh, it it overwhelms the paint job. Now let's get back to this dude. Uh, so here, uh, so first things first, uh, I think your skin is good. Uh, it could go a little farther. We could basically through smoothing, um, adding a little more soft tones in there in like a sort of red purple color, just some very supple glazes to kind of bring some of those shadows and mid tones together. Some of the lines, especially like here and in here, are a little harsh. Um, the tattoo, if you're going to do this kind of a tattoo, it shouldn't be black. It should be more blue. You want to glaze flesh tones over it. And um, you you want it to be very clean. So you're going to need like flow improver or inks or stuff like that to really do tattoos. I have uh, a video on tattoos as well as a video on painting sharp thin lines. Go check those out. You want to go back in with your flesh tones and clean those up afterward. Now, as to the uh, the rest of it, I mean, I think it's fine. Uh, but that's, you know, where where I would push the, you said to kind of where could you push the contrast? Um, I think for the most part, this is a very contrasting figure. I actually think that the, the challenge here has to do with kind of separation of elements a little more. His helmet feels like we could have a little more separation. Like when you do this glowing eye thing, there should still be a black ring or something dark, not really black, but, you know, black line. Like there should still be something dark here around it and then the glow should come out of it i know it's counterintuitive but we only really see bright set against dark okay so that kind of thing uh here on the edge of this where i can still see this like strong you know sort of line right here this should that kind of thing getting cleaned up that's the stuff that jumps out at me so almost more just like paint cleanliness and cleaning up more than anything else uh but yeah hope that helps all right, uh, Juan Francisco Gonzalez Hidalgo, the best name in the PMP. Uh, he painted this at Golden Demon level. Would look at like a critique as if you found it at Golden Demon or another painting competition. Sure. So I've looked at this fig quite a bit, uh, uh, Juan, since you you shared it, uh, and I've already studied this thing quite a bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna point out the areas that I think you wanna you wanna watch out and improve on. Um, I am not a Golden Demon judge, and I often get judged harshly. I've won a couple, literally two, and, uh, you know, so there are many out there who are better judges than me, but I will I will give you my best on and honest answer. Um, overall, I think this is really strong work. Where we've got opportunities is in two chief areas, I noticed. The first is just overall smoothness. 
Golden Demon really respects sort of technical proficiency and uh, and appropriate application of paint, technical proficiency, more than anything else, uh, more than any other competition I've been at. So, like, with something like Golden Demon, you want to make sure that every that these blends are as creamy smooth as they can be, and some of them still look a little rough, right? So just some additional glazing and stuff like that would probably help. Um, the 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 white like light catches I think is cool, but again you want to make sure that they're either thinner or sharp and like well applied. The but the other that probably wouldn't be as big a deal. The thing that actually jumps out at me the most is this, where you use like a sepia wash or something or a contrast paint or something of that nature, and it just looks like brown. I mean this just looks dirty. It doesn't look like a shadow to the white. And it looks like there's mud trapped down in the cloak here. So more white to smooth this over. And then see where your freehand line is? I've gotten busted on this one before. This needs to be cleaned back up with white. If you do freehand lines, they have to be as though you drew them with an ink pen. They need to be razor sharp. So you want to come back in after you've done the line as clean as you can. And then you want to clean that back up from the other side with the white. So... There you go. Overall, I think this is really, really, really good work. Okay? I think you did a great job with this. Uh, so just keep pushing, man. I think this is really wonderful. This is gorgeous. Gorgeous job. I really dig it. Uh, okay. Jamie. Uh, first bust going for all-around basic competence on each surface, aiming for fairly standard realistic skin tones. Sure. Sure. So the thing that jumps out at me the most with this bust is, I, like, I like your skin. I like the addition of the colors. There's good, lots of good reds and purples in there, so that's that's perfectly fine. Um, the stuff that jumps out to me as, as needing improvement has to do with the leather and the hair. When you're dealing with a bust of this size, again, my constant advice on, on busts is go as far as you think you should and then go twice as far as that. Okay, so get to the end of your rope, stop, and then do that exact same amount of time again. And that exact same amount of time, again, is there for adding detail. When we blow the scale up this large, like, okay, I am the same size as her right now. Wait, hold on. Where's she at? <laughs> there she is. She's right there. God, it's really hard to do it in reverse. She, her head is, like, the same size as mine. Right? So, you, like, this is the scale you're operating at. And the leather is rather flat. It doesn't have, like, if you want realism, then we need texture, edges, torn. Like, that's old, worn, very torn leather. So we need to see lots more, like, hashing, scratching, edging, all that kind of stuff on there. The hair is, again, like, very much uh, in this massive scale. So I need more, more control over light and shadows of where the reflection points are, lighting of the individual strands, shadowing of the in between the individual strands, lots of stuff like that. Uh, it's always just more. The Almost always the answer to what do I need to do with this bust, the answer is just more. More of everything, right? More push of the contrast, more push of the texture, that kind of thing. What I will say is I do really like the skin. I think you did a really great job on it. You caught the lights really well. Um, I think that looks really, really nice, which is a great, great, great um, uh, victory on a bust of this size. Okay, uh, Jack, uh, current tabletop standard for his elite units, looking for any standout weaknesses. Um, I mean, if you're looking for like a tabletop standard, because that's kind of what you said you were aiming at, I'll be honest with you, um, the only thing that jumped out at me was stuff like his back. You know, you could go back in and give that kind of a very light dry brush with a soft makeup brush, especially around here, to really pop out and catch those edges. You want to use, use something real, real soft. There you go. There's my makeup brush. Like this, okay? You can order a bunch of these in big packs online cheap. And, uh, like, this is so baby soft because it's meant for, like, you know, it's meant for, for your face and around your eyes and stuff. So it's it, the bristles need to be, like, really, really soft. You get a little bit of this, you wipe most of the paint off, like, almost all the paint off, and then you just lightly go over the back. If I was going for tabletop, that's the kind of thing I'd want to do. Those kind of little pop elements, I think, really help. Uh, same with the... Um, the the crystals on the rock maybe you could draw a little more shadow down in there could be as simple as just drawing uh maybe a little like deep brown into the lower part of the crystalline parts so that way they seem a little more reflective but i think that'd be basically my main advice going for tabletop overall i think this is a perfectly great scheme and i think you're, you're hitting a great effect for for tabletop standard so i hope that helps 
Uh, Mark Tan had fun painting this pox walker. Uh, finding it really hard to have the brightest highlights in the face and reflect colors in more area of the model. Okay. Uh, sure. So my best advice here, looking at this guy, is you can you can cheat in a couple ways to get that tension up on the face. So you want the attention up here, but it doesn't have to. You don't have to always do that through just the face. But the number one way you would do it is by darkening everything else, not brightening. Remember, there's two ways to make something stand out. A white dot on a white sheet of paper does not stand out. A white dot on a black sheet of paper, you you can see it immediately. Okay, or perhaps more more eloquently, a white dot on an ivory sheet of paper doesn't stand out. Right. Um, so the point being is that. If you shadowed more around the side of the cheek, the back of the head, and this guy has all sorts of really bruised flesh. So bring in some more deep purple and bring that in around the wounds, especially down below on the body, here on the side of the head, here on the back toward the disease, right? Shadow more, like you can push the bone striations darker here and then pop the highlights up more here on the edges. If all of this was brighter and darker, if this had more contrast and there was more shadow here, what are we left with as the brightest spot? Ta-da! Right? And we have this nice little frame of all these bones to draw us into it. So, uh, that would be my best advice for you. Now, I want to spin around to the leather here. So I can show everybody this because I do think this was a great piece. Uh, oh, there you go. I guess that's my leather. I thought I had one of the gun more directly or whatever, but we don't. Okay, that's fine. I think you did a good job. That's the, the, the take home. I think the leather works. Okay. I think you got some nice edges there. You could maybe do one more very soft glaze over all of it to kind of tie it a little more together, but for the most part, it's great. Okay, uh, Sean. Uh, paint and convert this guy to see how good you could make something. Also wanted to add in some color to it. Uh, so what, he, what he's looking for feedback on, are the shadows done well? Is the model looking like it had seen combat? And do the colors work well? Sure. Uh, well, it's kind of hard for me to tell, I'll be honest. For some reason, I think, Sean, it compressed your pictures. So just a couple things. I'll, I'll say what I can say. It's like, it just, I don't know why it's, and I don't think if I, I can try to make it bigger. Nope. No? Well, did it do a little? Okay. Now, nah, that's about as big as I can get it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, maybe it's catching up. All right. So I it, it clearly compressed your image, but I'll do my best, sir. Um, I think that the, again, so we've, I like dirty feet, but this is a little too far up. You want to focus more on the foot area. It shouldn't go all the way up to the knees. Like put that into scale. I know you said you want this guy to feel like he's in battle. That's fine. It shouldn't be uniformly like this. Add some extra like spots and stipples of dirt and you'll get, you'll go a lot farther. Okay. Same thing here. Um, go watch like the battle damage video would be my best advice. Like I have a video on doing battle damage and I think that will help you, you know, capture those scuffs and stuff like that. Um, beyond that, I think that, you know, when it comes to like the actual shadows, I think the shades are fine. I think some of the elements need a little more highlighting. Again, it's a little hard for me to tell, but things that pop out like this blue could actually pop up to slightly lighter color on the edge. Um, just so that these things are very far away from where they might be normally, uh, where they're very much in the way of light and very far away from where dirt would normally gather. So stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I think overall it's good. He does look dirty. I think it's nice. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, it's, I'm a little limited on what I can do because unfortunately I think Facebook got you there by giving you real small pictures. So, but hopefully that helps, Sean. Okay, and we're back to normal size. All right, Tomas, uh, muted, almost monochromatic, rusty scheme, uh, very vibrant demonic manifestations. Sure. Uh, so, and he's not sure if it really happened. So my answer is, remember what I said earlier about making sure the elements are separated? That's very much the case here. A lot of this is very much flowing together, right? Like the different elements, like look at how similar the hand is to the gun to the skull, to the leg, to the belly, to everything. And that's fine if something's all sort of rusted together, but it makes the figure very hard to read, okay? Now, if you're going for really bright stuff, we need more than just this. Like you said that, and I looked and I was like, I had to look at this thing like twice to know what you were even talking about because there's, there's like three tentacles on this guy that are bright. So if we're gonna do that, we gotta pick bigger elements and pop them out, right? 
Um, and, and we've got to fade everything else into a more muted scheme and really make sure the lines are well separated. So like everything here needs to be, have these dark lines between it. We need to have highlights here on the edge still. Like it's actually much harder to paint good dirty than it is to paint good clean because you have to paint it to a high standard clean first and then dirty it. Now, that all being said, uh, I would look at, I think the scheme will work fine. I think you just want to focus on what are the elements you're popping out. It needs to be more than like three bright green tentacles on the side, right? So figure out if you want to do maybe some bright corrosion or rust, maybe these horns could be in a bright color, right? Because they're kind of all over. Uh, but again, cleaning stuff up. There's too much places where it's just like the wash is all kind of here and it all kind of runs together. And that's the last step, right? Um, I need more separation of the definition of elements and the application of light, dark, light, dark to still keep it in line. So that's my that's my feedback for you. I hope that helps. Uh, all right, true. Uh, diorama inspired by Conan. Uh, feel you missed something about the flesh tones, even if you tried a different approach for each mini. Uh, test piece to participate in Monty. Sure. So uh, very Conan here, obviously. So and I can talk about kind of everything I want to from from here. So you were trying a bunch of different flesh tones, which is fine. Here's the challenge: all of these people are in the same place. This is one location underground, like, and in a diorama, there's one light source. Like, this is assumingly underground lighting. Maybe there's a torch. You don't have it modeled. Maybe it's just the cold blue light of the place. I don't know. But um, in any event, what I would focus on is with the skin tones. The challenge is you can have people have different skin tones. So, for example, the the evil sorceress lady there, who has like almost completely green or gray skin tone, the very ruddy barbarian, and the sort of uh, scared, chained up lady there, uh, who's kind of more neutral. All that's fine, but they should be lit and shadowed the same way. So you can use the mid-tone however you want. So maybe the barbarian's more tan, maybe the sorceress is very gray and pale, but your ultimate highlight color that you're mixing in should be a universal ambiance because they're all affected by the same light. So either they all have warm highlights and cold shadows or something like that, right? So, uh, you know, which is what you would do, by the way, if these people were all lit by torches. You also want to make sure that on the, the kind of ground itself, you create a lighting pattern. Like, all of your stone is basically just stone. It's just all universally the same thing. In underground scenes like this and dioramas, you want to create some kind of light source, some focal area. So, like, this area here should be brighter than anything back here. Okay, and you by, by lighting the center of the scene where the three figures are... It'll go a long way toward um, toward really like showing what's happening and drawing the viewer's attention to the right place. So there you go. Okay, so uh, Eugene, uh, first submission. So this is a slaughter priest. How can he improve the light and shading uh, with the selected color scheme? Found it difficult to make the face pop. Uh, sure. Okay, so let's talk about this. I don't think you have too much edge highlighting. I don't, I don't see a superflu superfluous amount of it in any way, to be completely honest. That's just the nature of these guys. Um, honestly, my biggest challenge is... So so forget all of that to the side. I don't normally push aside people's critiques or what they're asking for, but you said, you know, kind of whatever else I noticed. And I noticed one big thing here. First off, the same thing I just said earlier applies here, right? Like, if you deepen the rest of the areas, you need to brighten the face less. Now, that being said, you have these... We are way too stark on these transitions in the skin. Like, way, 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 way too stark. This goes 5-2. That is way too far. Like, it's going 5-2-1. Okay? So, you want to be pay heating the volumes of the skin and smoothing them out more. Um, my best advice, again, would be go watch the ruddy skin video I did. and Or the pale skin video. Either one is fine. Those are just two recent skin videos that are on the top of my head. And both... both would serve this there's a really important step here of smoothing out this transitions okay now as to how to make the face pop again same thing as i said before more shadow around the face in that kind of stuff so we have a more brightened focused area here by adding more depth of shadow on the sides it actually makes the bright parts seem brighter okay so there you go that would be my number one thing for you to focus on eugene hope that helps Okay, first submission, Zach. Uh, recently started painting again. Any and all critiques and comments, welcome. Sure. So my biggest advice for you here is it looks like we're relying on dry brushing a lot. 
And again, like paint cleanliness is, I think, your big challenge now that you're back in painting. Um, these elements need to be well defined and separated. So like this gold doesn't have any kind of real separation from this mask, right? These little lines, like we need deep, you need to have dark to light, dark to light. Clean paint jobs create high contrast on edge changes, okay? And what happens here is we've got a lot of places where things are kind of fudging together. And they don't really have as much separation as we would want, right? So we want to make sure we're pushing more shadows like against this belt and have a light on the edge of the belt and that kind of thing. Um, also, when you're going to do like dry brushing to kind of get it in there, um, you need to glaze over that in a bigger way to smooth that out. Like I can really see it when I look at stuff like here where I can really see the, the, this texture still. Um, I would look at stuff like makeup brushes for your dry brushing. It'll make your dry brushing a lot better. Um, and really look at separating your elements, focusing on cleanliness of the paint and brush control. That's going to be your, your big areas where you, you want to be focusing your, your improvement. Um, additional glazes, and if you need more info on glazing, you can check out uh, 122, how to glaze, uh, and that'll help. But I mean, I, I think you've got the basic idea because you seem to be manipulating some glazes here and some OSL. We just need to smooth down that that dry brushing more. Okay. Hope that helps, Zach. All right. Uh, uh, so, uh, Hui bringing us his test model scheme. Would this be good enough quality in an army? I mean, dude, this would be absolutely great for an army, sure. I'll tell you right now, I don't know that I would worry about the non-metallic on the army. I see, I, I, It's fine if you really feel like doing it. There's nothing wrong with it, but... In general, armies are viewed under really poor lighting. Most of the time when you take your army out and you go to a store or a club or an event, the lighting in there sucks. And non-metallic just will end up kind of looking flat a lot. It's a cool trick. It can certainly take you there. Um, but you're going to want to, like, your non-metallic doesn't have quite enough pop into highlights in some places. So you're going to want to push that a little higher if you're going to go this route. Like, more whites, more light catches. This is good. This is lacking. Like, the bands are good. Some of these pieces are lacking. I would honestly, and like the line here on the dagger needs to be thinner or smoother transitions, that kind of stuff. I would honestly like it better if it was just true metallic, uh, to be completely honest. Um, avoid the white in the fire. Bring that, that you still have some bit of yellow in it. Avoid pure white in fire. But other than that, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Skin looks great. Wonderful transition from the pink into the blue. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. I, I like, is this good enough for an army? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. So think on what I said about the non-metallic versus true metallic. And if you're going to do the non-metallic, you're in for a long road. It's very rewarding, but just understand that you're going to have to like really put in the work because otherwise it will do less than just what doing true metallic would have done. All right, John, uh, second entry, uh, best you could do. Uh, want to see how you could prove painting skin. Sure. Let's take a look. All right. So again, we're, we're getting better, but the same thing is going to apply that I said uh, a lot already. More tonal variation in the skin. Go see the, you know, the attached video. Um, I need more purples, more highlights. Basically, we're in, we've got some threes and fours here, but we need more. I need deeper shadows. I need more colors. Uh, I need uh, more highlights, things like that. More tones worked into it. So not just the, not just the valuation, not just the variation of hue, but also of value so there you go uh that's my biggest piece of feedback keep pushing keep looking at those highlights i've talked about a lot of the skin tones here you know go look at like the orc from the beginning go look at some of the ones that i've commented on being really good and try to see what you can do there okay that's it's crazy to me by the way that two people in the road did this dark oath chieftain right back to back i mean this thing's been out for years and here we go like within two days of each other it's really funny uh so at any rate hansa said first try it as competition standard uh spent 20 hours in the mini uh and followed the strategy in painting for gold demon quality was i successful major flaws sure so the answer is we need to continue to smooth things more uh so some of the skin the transitions here between our shadow and our light is rather stark we want to avoid that uh we need more transition in the skin so again and more focus of the highlighting in the areas so the uh, skin up here on the top of his chest. This should be brighter than our highlights down here or here. So like, you know, this should be at a pure one. These should be at like a 1.3, something like that. You want it to be volumetric to where the things nearer the light are brighter. Okay. 
Um, I think the sword looks good. I think the you've got an interesting take on color scheme here. I think the texture on the cloth looks good. I like that. I think your major challenge here is one in the metals. Um, they're still quite flat. We need more more uh, variation there. Uh, so push more shadows in there, some weathering, things like that. And then on the skin, smoothing it out, and again, adding more of a lot of especially the, the extra value uh, to it in the, the low areas. Like we're missing kind of a four here. We don't really have enough shade connecting the deepest part of it to the middle tone. It's almost like you need a little more three, four is what I would say. So... But I'm glad the video was helpful and uh, it came out really nice. So I hope that gives you some good advice to keep pushing. Okay, uh, Bartaz, paint this unit best score for a squad painting competition. Looking for some general critique on the unit, but especially the banner and the rusty metal. Sure. Uh, so overall, I think these guys look cool. Um, I do dig them. I think he did a nice job. Let's start with the banner. Um, banner looks nice. Your biggest issue is shading in the red. Um, the freehand looks really cool and good. I love the texture to it. I would just love it if overall there was a little more texture, or sorry, shadow in the red. The red feels very flat compared to the visual interest that you created on the freehand piece. Uh, so a little more darker shades, especially here and here and up under here where the skulls are. Um, as far as the rusted metal goes, it's very brown, and we're lacking a lot of, like, the super orange edges where things would be rusted out. We're a lot in the same tone. I think we need to push it on the stippling a little more and have a little more focus into the uh, the pockmarky, blotchy nature of metals and having a little more focus on some deep dark browns and blacks. There's a little bit in here we can go farther and pushing more up into the orange or purple or pink rust or yellow rust. It all exists. So you can do all sorts of stuff like that to kind of... Because right now the armor feels flat. It's rusted, but it's just it's just kind of all brown. It doesn't have enough variation, texture, and transition of color. So I hope that helps. Okay, Sergey, uh, the Butcher from Kingdom Death. Looking for feedback on areas you can improve, especially the OSL and the lanterns on the, lanterns on the back. Sure. Uh, so he's nice. He's very much cast in shadow. When you're doing this like super dark... Uh, non-metallic where you have very small volumes of light my best advice is you want to make sure those those high highs are really high they need to like pop hard to keep drawing attention so like taking a couple pure white light points here just scattered around where the light is really the dim light is reflecting even a dim light will on a shiny metal will pop a point of almost pure white light where it hits the reflection right so you can capture that kind of stuff uh, now onto the OSL uh, I think it's fine. You could you maybe bring a little more of the soft ochre orange into the overall flames, I think is probably what I would say. Uh, the light itself feels, the way it's cast is all right, with one small thing that sticks out at me, which is just that all your metal on the back is still cold lit. So this is just a common thing that happens. You started painting the metal using a certain selection of colors, you know, whatever, you're, you're white to, to dark blue, black. Maybe you're using dark sea blue or something. Fine. In a neutral lighting situation like you have on the front, it sells. On the back, he's lit by all this extremely warm candlelight. The lighting of the metal would no longer be this cold white. You can see it like right here, right? It would be very cold. So like this light that's on the top of the lanterns and on the sides of the lanterns, that should be the yellow light. That is the dominant light source that's creating these reflections you've painted. So the color that it's reflecting needs to be reflected appropriate. So when you change lighting conditions, highly reflective surfaces like metal will change in accordance with the light temperature. Okay? So that's my big piece of feedback for you. All right. Dan, uh, Inquisitor, designed as commander for his custom Space Marine chapter. Uh, love some advice on painting ivory, light brown fabric, and some general input on the glow of the scepter vase and color choices. Sure. So, I mean, I think the color choices are fine. It's pretty standard sister stuff. I would have maybe, you, you want to pop up the black hair a little more. It kind of fades in. I think one of the challenges here is she is very, and so the black and white is going to give this away. She's very samey, right? Like there's not a lot of variation in here. There's a little bit where we can see the light reflecting off the true metallic, stuff like that. So my best advice would be, you know, to push the highlights, especially on the black, a little farther. Um, careful with the base, by the way. It does just look like cork 
that's been dry brushed again never make your cork look like cork it should have stuff on it it should have texture it should have things if it's meant to be a big piece of concrete then put a piece of plastic card over it or something and stipple some texture into it put down some milliput some dos some something and stipple some texture into it 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 wouldn't look like that right like scale that up and that would be it, it was it's just it, you'd have a very strange it looks like she'd be standing on igneous volcanic rock right not on concrete um but the uh i mean i think uh you know composition wise it mostly works i think your biggest challenge here is you want to still push your tonal variation across the miniature a lot higher so uh especially in the blacks uh actually cult of paint just put out a nice video about highlighting blacks so you could go check that out uh i think that was like really well explained they were doing a sister of battle with and showing how they do the black armor and i think it looks really nice for sort of a, a tabletop or higher higher than tabletop standard so that would be my recommendation. So I hope that helps, Dan. All right, Michael. Hey, Mike, good to see you again. This is a, a night he started back with me in the class. I very much remember this guy. Uh, feedback on the things he could do to take it to the next level. Well, I always love to see uh, one of my students complete a, a project like this. It's so gorgeous. I just want to say off the, off the rip, I think he did a great job of bringing it to completion. Love the purple and... Uh, and green color schemes. I think that worked really well. Um, now, as to the, uh, you know, where do you go from here? Uh, I think your areas for improvement are probably in some additional like weathering or scratching or stuff like that. He is very clean. Um, so he, just even if we did some light streaking, some chips here or there, just a little bit is gonna add a lot more texture to this guy. You don't have to go crazy. You can be very, very subtle with it. And I think it'll still help a lot. I noticed a couple chips in like the leg. Doing some streaks or something would help. Uh, the same thing with the gold. I feel like we could push the contrast on the gold a little farther. I like some stuff up here in the side, but like the front of this is turned away from the light. The bottom here is turned away from the light. More glazing of those colors into the metal, I think would really uh, help as far as taking it to the next level. Same with the metal itself. Um, going back into the steel and just kind of taking some light washes or some very thin inks and glazing in just like some subtle browns here or there or stuff like that could really help to bring the model all the way together and to make sure that there's uh, a lot more visual interest in what is otherwise kind of, you know, going to be the, the basic steel we put together, which is nice variation, but it adds a little more life and texture to what is a giant robot. So I hope that helps, Michael. Great stuff. The the big dragon free hand on the back that you were working on, I remember in the class, this came out great. Um, the additions on the side are wonderful. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. I think basically it's just more colors, more more sort of additions of light washes, uh, not as an all-over wash, just as light glazes and filters put over the metals to kind of add some more texture and life to them, I think is where you want to go. So hope that helps. Bleep Bloop. Oh, Bill Bloop. Uh, always a great time when we get a post from Bleep Bloop. Let's take a look at his unit of 20 Grim Gas Reapers. Bleep has an absolutely gorgeous army. Uh, honestly, one of the best looking armies in the country, uh, in the U.S., and it's it's absolutely a stunner. Uh, as usual, this is just fantastic work. So what I was talking about, I'm just going to pause here because this is more, I don't really have much feedback for, for Bleep. I mean, his stuff is always great. Uh, my, what I want to do instead is reference this part in the video so I can come back to it for other people who might have some challenges. This is all non-metallic metal. And here you notice how well he's running from like one to five, how well he's creating his light and shadows in contrast on the sides and on the sides of the, the heads and the, their little, you know, elements that are gold and dangling or whatever. Um, notice how he's defined all of the elements really cleanly like you can see the light and dark separation between everything notice how each finger has a dark line each hand has a dark line there's a dark line between the uh the face and the side of the uh of this robe whatever he has i don't know notice how it gets dark under the cloth here that kind of stuff is what makes uh, it, it looks so clean and so sharp uh, so this is sort of what I'm talking about. If you're going to do non-metallic on an army level, this is the sort of standard you want to, you want to paint to. So there you go. 
awesome, awesome work, Bleep. Beautiful, as always. Uh, I am so sad that I didn't get to see you at Adepticon, but uh, I look forward to the next event where we can get together, buddy, and uh, can't wait to see your army. Okay, uh, Vlad, bringing in some finished Storm Fiends. Uh, got them up to the Warpstone Crystal in the back. What doesn't show up is the flickering effects. This is kind of cool. Uh, he has some some really neat effect here. I'll spin to the picture with it. You can see he has like glowing warp crystals. That's really cool. So very good stuff overall. Uh, my biggest feedback for you is going to be, one, cleaning up some of your stuff like your edge highlighting. You want to go back and make sure that those are nice smooth transitions. There's a lot of places where it's rough. And two, see all my previous comments about tonal variation on the skin. The skin is kind of flat across them. So those are the two big, big things that jump out at me that I think would be chances for improvement. But very cool, Vlad, and I always love to see some LED work like that. It looks really nice. Okay, uh, Sang, who brings us uh, the con. Been practicing uh, white for the past six months. I, this has been a great journey you've been on, uh, Sang, and I just I love seeing these white scars. I, I want to paint a white scar and dedicate it to you. I honestly do. Uh, because I've, I've, I've honestly been inspired by all your, your work with this. Sang has gone on such a journey of every month learning and pushing himself and, uh, just really doing an amazing job of continuing to grow. And that's what I love to see in this community, uh, is people really taking in the feedback and continuing to push it. So, uh, did you achieve white non-metallic metal? No, but that's okay. You achieved beautiful white. My honest answer is, I like this better. I think this sells, man. I think this is gorgeous. Now, because I don't, I think it would be kind of disruptive, honestly, if it was the same as the sword or something like that. So I think you captured the shadows of the white scar of the white really nicely. He still reads as white, but there's a there's beautiful, rich, lustrous, cold shadows. I'm good with it, buddy. I really am. Now, that being said, if you want white non-metallic metal you can do it uh, this is something i've threatened to make a video about forever but it's really really a difficult paint job to pull off um and i've just i've just haven't wanted to do it frankly uh but at any rate if you want to do it here's my best advice uh go look up uh gareth uh nicholas okay uh former uh designer for gw and like more times than i can count golden demon winner who painted a reflective white uh, white scar. And you'll notice that the element there that he did is it's in reflective lighting. Uh, do make sure you map these guys out, by the way. See how that reflection is getting in the way with like, that's just a glossy reflection. You really want to avoid that. Minor note. But at any rate, you'll notice how he heeds the normal rules where he'll have it go and he'll have lights in the shadows. So just to make this very simple, it'll go like one, two, three, four, five, four, three, four, five right? So there'll be like light caught in the shadow from the reflected light. That's what you're doing when you're painting something like this, right? Which by the way, you want to make sure you smooth out that transition there between the deep black and the blue. But at any rate, when we paint our non-metallic swords like this, this is reflected lighting. Only one of these is the direct immediate light source. Everything else is bounce lights where it hits the ground and it's coming back up or it hits his armor and it's coming back up or something like that, right? That's what we're meaning to capture here, the ambient environment. So uh, so if you want to push in that direction, I think that's where you would go. But again, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. You have, uh, you've done beautiful work here. You've really been pushing the white scars and I think you're doing a great job saying. Okay. So, next up, Caspian. Trolls and Loon Boss complete. Thoughts on the yellow armor and the troll skin is appreciated, though fairly pleased with the results overall. So let's see if we can get to some... <coughs> excuse me, some good lighting here. Yeah, I think the troll skin is fine. Um, I think you could glaze in some more soft pink tones a little more. You've got a little bit of it in there. Around, like, the sides of the belly, up under the arms. That would be kind of my big advice there. Push some of that up some more. Uh, the Loon Boss. Now, on him... it. You know, the yellow is kind of very, very muted. He looks like he's, you know, mostly lit by the, the light below. I think I'd love to see a little bit more of a color element somewhere on him standing out. Maybe, like, the nose piece or the, the weapon should be slightly different in color. I don't mind it. I really like how you captured the green sort of glow coming up. I think that's well executed. I just feel like we need to push maybe a highlight a little higher or have more of a color in there. Maybe it could be like the shoulder pad is different or something. And then, you know, like something that draws from... Everything's very samey. 
That's my only issue with it. Uh, the weapon being the same color as the mask to a large degree is also throwing me off. So those are my big piece of feedback for you, Caspian. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, uh, Zen. Greatly appreciate any advice you, uh, or advice you have on general areas of improvement. Uh, sure. So my best advice for you at this point is, um, again, it's going to be very much tonal variation. Go and watch the, the linked video. There's, there's many opportunities for it here. The shield is very flat colored green. This is a this is a uh, sphere shape. It should have reflections that, you know, speak to that. The uh, hair hair, like I've mentioned many times, should have like a bright beard like this. Should have lots of highlights here around the bottom of the beard where it's coming out. There should be deeper shadows and there should be lights where it. Anytime it anytime hair condenses, it gets darker and then when it pops back out, it catches the light. That's an easy guideline to follow. It's not a rule. It's a guideline, right? So there would be a bright and then a shadow and then a bright and then a shadow and then a bright and then a shadow. And again, go look at like those, you know, Pantene or Vidal Sassoon bottles or whatever. But tonal variation is your big thing. That's what you want to push for. And if you go watch the the linked video I have uh, the, there, especially where I talk about the Skaven, and you'll see kind of the old Skaven and then the new Skaven and how that translates, that should really clear things up for you. So I do hope that helps. All right, Ben Layton. Uh, third attempt at painting a bust figure after painting miniatures. Love to get some feedback. Yeah, I think, so I looked at this guy quite a lot. I think it's pretty great. Uh, I really like this guy. I think he did a wonderful job. Um, the biggest areas of improvement are probably on the little birdie birds. Um, they feel like they could use a little more feather texture where it's kind of being pulled out. You're really doing a great job with texture in these, in this fig, like really great. And then it just doesn't feel like you have enough in the, in the birds themselves. The skin on the red parts is a little harsh around his forehead. I feel like you could soften that up here. Like, I, I don't mind this lower part being a little darker, but it should fade a little more and be like more of a soft, subtle pink. You could also, he's really old, you could have like liver spots or stuff like that around the side of his head here around his forehead, like where it meets his hairline. That could be another way to kick it up a little bit. The softness of the pink down here in the hand, I really like. Uh, this part again is a little too harsh. These need smoothed a little. Um, I do love the beard. Great job on the texture there. You really, this is what I'm talking about with the light and the shadow. Uh, the texture on the leather and the, uh, green cape, they're both executed very well. The one thing I would say and challenge you on is you might have wanted to make those a little bit more different textures. So they stood out, like maybe use stippling more on the one and hashing a little more on the other. It can help to create texture contrast as well as just value contrast. So there's there are all the forms of contrast in the world. So um, you know, just a just a thought for you there. But overall, I think this is a really great job. I, I like your execution here. I think this is is uh, super fun. So uh, yeah, well done. Love the oldness of the skin. Love the color under the eyes. Great variation in that. Absolutely wonderful work. Okay, next up, Casper. Uh, feedback how to improve this model? Uh, sure. So the, the first thing that occurs to me is it's still rather lacking in kind of some definition in some places. Like she has this mermaid lower half and we didn't really do much with it. It's just kind of blue. Like it would have been a great chance to do, again, like a pattern, a texture or something like that. It has these little micro ridges in it and we're not really doing much with that. So sometimes when the sculpt is kind of flat, we've got to add to it on its own. Same with the contrast up here on her weapon or whatever this thing is she's holding. Um, again, that needs to go farther, more variation that, especially if that's supposed to be some kind of like metal, assumingly, reflecting. So, and it's it's really not right now. The other thing that jumps out at me is the hair. See all of my previous comments. Like it's kind of just evenly highlighted. All of the top areas are light. All of the low areas are dark. That's not really how hair works, right? Because hair is satin, it's creating almost more like metallic reflections. So there should be a halo of light here, a halo of light here, and probably a, a softer one here. And then this all should be more in shadow. And you want both the low points to be darker and the high points to be darker. And then you want both the high points to be brighter and the low points to be brighter as it moves through this, you know, wave pattern of the hair. So that's my uh, that's my advice. Those are the things that jumped out to me, Casper. I do hope that helps. Okay, Matt O'Brien. Uh, this is a Kingsman, painter from Kingdom Death. Look for feedback on color composition and the base. Uh, sure. 
So with the base, my biggest piece of advice for you is, as always, dirt is not brown. I know we think dirt is brown. Dirt is not brown. Dirt has all sorts of colors in it. It has reds and purples and greens, certainly a lot of greens, because nature is messy and gets all up in each other's business. And there's a lot. So you want to make sure you work different tones into that. Uh, that's the first thing I note is that I that I note. Now, as far as composition goes, you have this kind of soft, desaturated purple color, as well as the then the uh, off green. Um, yeah, I think that works fine. Those are two great colors that work great together. Technically, your tertiary color here is uh, what well, would be yellow because you have gold, but because of the sort of shading or the color you've used, it's actually orange. Either way, I think it's kind of in between the two enough that it works as a as a split complementary scheme. So I think that's fine. Uh, composition wise, I don't have any issues. I like the texture on the cape. Looks nice. It's a good job. It's very well done. Okay. Uh, next up, Jacob with the big old black dread or dreadlord on black dragon. Uh, so and he used the warmer picture. Basically, love to hear some general feedback, strengths, weaknesses, recommended challenges. We're going to go to this picture because I do feel this represents it better. This is the one under a warm light. So, um, yeah, this is good stuff. Like, overall, this is really nice. I like the texture on the dragon. I like uh, a lot of the things going on here. So, places where we could continue pushing uh, would be stuff like your metals. The metals need more variation. Um, things like the spear shaft and, and that kind of stuff. I feel needs a little bit more glazing of color and and a little more pushing of value contrast there or control of the light um the bone you could go a little farther on i like you've got some transition there we could go farther uh it, it, it could be and we can have a uh, some different colors in there you could honestly the the it would be neat to work in the same red tones that you've worked into the underbelly and the mouth and the wings and stuff like that having a little bit of that soft uh magenta tone glazed into those bones in the sort of uh three to four transition area would look really really cool um, and then speaking of the wings, I, I like the texture. I would pull some of that out a little more carefully. It feels like we need a little more control over the smoothness of the light to the shadow. I don't mind the hashing because they're meant to be like old leathery wings. So I think that's actually okay. But you still want to control some of the, the smoothness of the actual blend there when you're transitioning over colors. So that would kind of be the areas I would, uh, I would push on. But overall, really cool, uh, cool mini. Okay. Jim Norfolk, Girl and the Dragon Skull by First Legion, hoping to achieve competition quality in the future. This is your sixth model so far. So, one, welcome. So glad to have you. It's awesome. Two, six minutes you're painted. Good job. Three, forget about competition right now. That is not what you need to be thinking about. That's like if you just started running and you just ran a half mile and you're up to being pretty confident at running a half mile and you said, but ultimately... Uh, I want to be in, I want to, I want to complete the Boston marathon in a really good time, not just complete it, but in a really good time. Right. So that's cool. That can be in your mind as a long-term goal. That's a thousand steps away right now. Right. Um, so not to dissuade you, like go and, and compete and stuff like that. Yeah. There's no comp, there's no quality level for that. My point is don't make that your goal, make the fundamentals that are going to get you there, your goal. Right. So uh, that being, I, I didn't, I'm not trying to chastise you. It's just something that jumped out at me from your, your thing. I mean, I probably painted a thousand, 2000 miniatures before I ever went to a competition. I wish I would have competed earlier. So you don't need to aim for that. I'm just saying like, you know, focus on the fundamentals first. Now, happily in looking at the miniature, which now we'll jump into, uh, I'm glad to say you're, you're clearly making incredible progress. I can see you've learned a lot um from you know sort of probably various educational sources uh like the little the non-metallic weapon looks uh very nice i would smooth some of those blends out uh really work on where your kind of light placement is falling but on the whole i think it looks nice your biggest challenge here by far is tonal variation your red your brown your skin are flat right um they do not have enough uh either variation of value or hue as i've said many times so far so as I've talked about the skin earlier in the video, uh, more tones, more purples, more pinks. Again, go watch the, um, you know, the, the skin tutorials that I recently did, and you'll see a lot in there about adding more to it. The hair is much the same way, by the way, uh, where we would want to see those halos of light. So that kind of thing. 
Uh, that's so my main challenge for you, Jim, as you continue along this path, and I'm so excited for you because you're you're making incredible progress for your sixth mini. This is absolutely fantastic work. Uh, I I just I'm 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 shocked. I I will tell you my sixth mini look, nothing like this. Uh, boy oh boy, did it look bad. Uh, so I I very much want to encourage you. Where you need to focus on is in pushing that contrast and understanding how those lights and darks are, and various sort of interference colors and hues are going to work together to create something visually interesting. So uh, check out those videos I mentioned. Uh, you can go watch the contrast video, or the sorry, the explanation video linked below, and that should set you on the right direction. Okay, uh, Tomas, uh, looking for feedback on color selection and balance the reflective effect of the armor and the texture of the cloak. This is really good work, man. Uh, I spent a lot of time looking at this one. So a couple things that jump out at me, just to give you some minor feedback. One, what I said about colors in the deep shadows is the number one thing that I see missing here. Um, so let's go to the black and white, and it'll really show it off. Here we go. Okay, so first of all, we're running the full gamut of colors here, and I am here for it, buddy. I love it. This is how non-metallic should look in black and white. Yes, 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 yes. Great. I'm here for it. Uh, okay. Where we have a challenge, I'll, I'll, I'll just take a microcosm here. We'll, we'll do this chest piece right here. Okay? This this particular, his left chest plate. Like the light, smooth enough transition. Like the light line, falls away in a shadow. We should have a secondary reflection either here or here or both. Okay? Because light is going to come down, hit the ground, come back up, hit this edge, bounce, reflect here. This would be lit. Right? Same thing. Light is going to come down, hit this surface here. You, you're showing me there's a light reflection right here, literally. You've painted it on, and yet it's not actually reflecting light. Right? Like, if this is this is reflected light, that's what you've created here, right? But that means light has hit, bounced off, and is coming to my eye. And yet, there's no light here. Okay? So when you create a reflection... It needs to be. It needs to go somewhere. Like you've told me, the light is acting in a certain way. So same. You can really see it easy on the knee pad where there should be an underlight here because light comes straight down, hits the ground, boop. It's going to light the underside of that. Um, if you want to get some really good insight into this, Cujo did the gold standard video on this on painting uh, non-metallic reflections and understanding how they interact with various shapes. So that's what I would point you toward. The only other thing that jumped out at me is a minor note. Oh, the cloth tech, the the texture on the cloak, by the way, looks looks great. I I have zero issues with that. I think that's excellent. Composition wise, again, I'm fine with it. I'm here for it, man. Love the colors. Yes, dig it. Love the green to the purple. It's a very desaturated green. It's a great choice. It's wonderful. Um, the volumes on your sword are rather even. So what I mean by that is this is the same size as this is the same size as this is the same size as this and they're all equidistantly apart. You kind of want to watch that sometimes. You want to see if you can like push those things a little in. Uh, so like some should be maybe smaller, some should be maybe bigger, should bigger areas of shadow in between. You don't want it to be like light doesn't work on an abacus. Okay, so uh, you want to think about variance in that as well. That'll make it feel more natural. But overall, this is really great stuff, man. I, I saw this and I was, I dug it. I love this scheme, this like purple and green scheme. Composition wise, this this gets a, this gets a, a hard yes from me. I'm here for this. Okay. Great stuff. Uh, speaking of great stuff, Benjamin, uh, beginning of his Corvus Cabal Warband. Basically, uh, what do I think about the, he's going for this very muted tone. Trying to do color circles in his composition, hot shadows, cold highlights, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, let's let's get into them. I love these conversions, by the way. These as we go through these, these look wonderful. Uh, my answer, Benjamin, is for what you're going for. I think this is great. I I honestly don't know that I have much feedback for you, assuming you're going for something on the tabletop that you're not trying to paint up to like a display quality, because I think these are really well executed. Well, that's not that's not true. I have one piece of feedback for you. We'll get there in a minute. I like the color. I think the magenta work. I think the color circles are working. I am, I, yeah, like, yep, it's good. Reflections on the leather work. The edges of the feathers getting caught with these lights work. I dig it. So my only issue with this is you're using a lot of old brown leather and there's almost no texture to any of it. So if I was going to give you one simple piece of advice to make this pop, 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 
it would be give me some hashing, some scratching, some dots uh, on the leathers. So I've done a previous video on doing leather. I've got another one coming out probably in like a month, I think. It'll be a little while. Um, but at any rate, it just it's, you know, adding that texture, those hashes, those scratches, those stippling, those dots, that kind of variation to the leather would make it feel a little more authentic. That was my only thing. And it would also help break it up, by the way, from the smooth black cloth. But these are great. Wonderful additions of these of these simple colors that created such visual interest. If this guy was just like sort of kind of the black blue and didn't have that magenta, it would be so much more boring. So that is a brilliant addition. Okay, uh, uh, blonde. Let's say. Uh, let's let's hope I'm getting that right. Uh, so he says two general questions. One issue I run into a lot was the paint consistency, leaving brush strokes. How to thin your paint? Oh yeah, he found that in Hobby Cheating One Twenty Two. That's right. Good. Good, good, found the answer. Okay. Two, when using complementary colors to create shadows, is there a difference in the result between mixing the colors together on my wet palette versus layering them on top of each other individually? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there absolutely is. Because every time you lay down another translucent layer, you're building a stack of interfering color. Paint is translucent. It lets light through. The more different layers of paint are interacting, the more visual confusion and complexity is communicated to your eye and the more realistic and rich something seems. So that's why just mixing it doesn't work. Now, as far as what we can do here, this picture gives the game away. Again, when we look at the skin, what do we see? All one color, right? So see all the previous comments I've made about uh, tonal variation in the skin. And I think that's what you want to focus on. That's the area that jumps out the most to me. The wings are good. The red cloth is, is nice. You've got a lot more action there. We can see kind of how that breaks out with some lighter spots. The wings kind of break out nicely. But where we've got a lot of opportunity still is with that skin, which is still very, very uh, flat. We want to work in those other tones. Same videos I just talked about. Go back and check those out. Okay, uh, Joe. Uh, finished a while ago, but still consider it one of his best pieces. Uh, basically, add more dynamic appearances to rusty metal. Sure. So one thing I would do is, and you mentioned you like scrape with silver. Don't scrape with silver. Um, or at least very minimally. Like, enameled steel when it gets scraped will not turn silver unless something really dug into it and got a hold of it and left a really deep pit and and basically insta polished it because when you when you just when you wear away enamel that metal underneath was never polished it was just iron that was sprayed and so it's not going to have that super shiny tone you can have a few brighter hashes if like, if you're trying to represent an impact scratch where a single thing like a bullet hit and went through it and would have sort of force polished the metal. But as to rusting metal, um, my advice is, so my best advice for you is to go watch my uh, Iron Jaws weapons video. It's like in the 103 to 106 range. You'll see exactly how I tackle metals there in lots of different ways, add different color to them. I also have a rusted weapons video from much earlier on. Um, you could check that out as well. Both of those videos should be very helpful to you as far as, um, uh, you know, kind of learning how the, the basic tactics of stippling, when to use washes, how to work color tones in, how to still relieve, reveal some of the metal. Like, it's a big question you ask that needs a whole video to explain it. Fortunately, I have two videos that do so, so I would go check those out. Um, but overall, things I really like on here, like the the tires and the, and the wear and tear, does look good. I like how you scuffed and scratched things. So I think, like, especially around the edge of the reds and the orange there in the front of the, the, the trike and stuff like that, they look really nice. So go check out those metal videos, and that'll hopefully help. Okay, uh, Rubris, basically what he's asking is he was trying for different textures. Speaking of popular thing this month, this month's thing is textures apparently. Um, how successful was it? Sure. Uh, well, so the first thing that jumps out to me is the one that sells is the hat. The problem is the rest of them don't super sell to me. So like the... the If you're going for like... So, so let's break this down, Okay. So the skirt is velvet. So, okay, some kind of crushed velvet. Um, the corsage is black leather. Okay. And the blouse is white linen. Got it. All right. So the white linen is the one that you could basically just do almost without texture because it's going to be, linen tends to be fairly fine. If you were going to do anything, you would do extremely thin repeated hashes. 
Uh, crushed Velvet, or Velvet, has a stippled pattern to it. So go look. I mentioned, uh, uh, you know, people earlier that, like, um, I mentioned, um, uh, yeah. So at any rate, uh, the, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Okay, let's start over. I've been going for a while here, clearly. All right. Let's, uh, so I mentioned Nicholas Gareth earlier, right? And um, the, uh, the you look at how he does his cloaks. Sorry, back on task now. Brain stopped for a minute, had to reboot. There we go. Uh, <laughs> the Look at how he does his cloaks, where he'll have like lots of little tiny stippled dots. That's what's going to sell the effect of that velvet. Now, on black leather, black leather is highly reflective. It's very, you know, satin. Um, it's going to come up to this extremely bright reflective shine over a small volume. And then most of it will be black. So working in about 40% of your space, you need to come up to a high highlight. So these are like, that's a lot of different textures to play with. And I would go, the, my, my best advice is always go look at those items in the real world. Like really go Google images of that stuff and see them. Don't just look at them, see them. Spend 10 minutes, put a phone down, start your clock, Spend 10 minutes staring at that material, really seeing it. Don't look away. Don't look at other things. Don't get distracted. See that texture. Okay? And then figure out how it's actually working with the light. And then you can come back and figure out which texture to apply, how high to take the highlights, that kind of thing. Like, right now, your velvet has a higher, te has a higher reflection point than your leather. Like leather's shinier than than velvet. That velvet will will is you know will have some reflection to it. But a cat like I'm when you say black black leather, I think of you know like Catwoman, and her suit reflected darn near white light, right at the at the edges where it was where it was uh, sort of shiny. So I don't know if you're going for that level of brightness, but again, bright black leather will often be very shiny. I think of you know Trinity in the Matrix or something, right? Uh, so at any rate, there you go. All right, so keep going. Uh, Alex uh, just minced out last month. Can I uh, feedback on this miniature? Uh, so he, you know, basically says he feels good about the armor, but the gun doesn't look quite as good. Yeah, I, the armor has some good variation in it. So again, much much of the same things we've been talking about. I like the 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 color on it. We could push into some deeper shadows in a few places, but for the most part, I think the armor, especially the blue, is solid. The red feels very flat by comparison, right? So in general, what we often see people do with guns is push the edge highlight on the top and then push a shadow up to the top. And I think that would, you know, serve you well here. So if we had this being relatively bright along the edge and then a darker area up here transitioning down to lighter red orange at the bottom, that would probably help with your overall concern and make it feel a little bit more, um, make it feel like it has the same level of contrast that the rest of it does. And that's basically where your challenge is at. So hope that helps. Uh, okay, uh, Florian, uh, so basically, uh, he invests a lot of time and feel it lacks in some areas, uh, you know, couldn't push himself for more. What are your thoughts? Yeah. So, I mean, looking at it, I'll, I'll say that the, the thing that jumps out of me is that lack of tonal variation, that lack of contrast, because it's, I mean, the black and white gives it away. All the armor is the same gray. The hair here is the same gray. This is the same color, right? Like the places where we, that, that's it. I mean, that's the, that's the whole shooting match right there. So what you'd want to push on is like on things like this, um, this, whatever this thing is, <laughs> this thing is his headpiece, you know, darker shadows here in between separation lines of darker color in between the individual pieces, brighter tips toward the edge where it's bristled out and, and catching more light, much more, you know, shadows and variation on the purple of the armor. Again, see the, uh, reference video below and that'll really help. Um, same with the sort of non-metallic gold here. It needs to run well more contrast and uh, and really push that out. So that's what jumps out at me. Okay, Scottster, uh, Zombie Unicorn. Uh, would like to know if the model is coherent and fits the base. Sure. That is a fun, crazy project. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a weird riot of colors, which I think is, is fun and interesting. Um, yeah, for, for what it is, I think it's fine. Um, 
I think that overall it looks dead. It looks like a zombie unicorn that's kind of like got color leaking out all over him. Uh, I think probably where you could stand to see some improvement, and it happens here, is in things like the bone. So the like the flesh has some some nice variation. We could smooth it out a little more, but stuff like that. In the flesh and the muscle, or sorry, the the bone and the muscle. I apologize. Uh, like the the bone here is all kind of very samey colored. So having some more deeper shadows, colors, browns, deeper tones in there. And again, you could use other colors. You can use some of your actual real hues here to shade it down if you want. Uh, same with the muscle, having a little bit more bright, sort of almost pinkish striations and points and the hashing and things like that, I think would go a long way. So that's what jumps out of me. But uh, yeah, cool, cool, crazy project. So uh, that's really neat. Okay, uh, shaky. First 90 millimeter miniature working on glazing and faces. Uh, so yeah, any advice would be appreciated. It's, it's going to come down to the same thing. So, uh, what I noticed in looking at him is, is one, so your eyes are kind of off center there. Um, but the, the answer in anytime you go upscale is more. See the previous comments I made about the bust, but I'll give you some easy examples. Um, the face needs a lot more color. Like again, you know, it needs a lot more of everything, more highlights, more shadow. It's still very flat in a, in something of this size. You have all the room to work there. You can get the red in the cheeks. Like, look at my face and how much color there is in it right now, right? How much different, like, the shadows here and here and here, right? Under my eyes, this bright light spot that's reflecting across my my bold, shiny head, but also here on my eyebrows, on the tip of my nose, right? These lines here, cheeks, that kind of stuff, right? All that. Um, same with the red in the cloth, right? Like you, it, it, when you get to this size, it's not just, it becomes a lot more about not just the uh, value contrast, which is important and should be pushed a little farther here, but it also becomes a big deal about texture. When you're in something of this size, the texture would be visible. So like this cloth, for example, is made of something. It's, you know, what is it made of? And so things like stippling or hashing textures or stuff like that. Same with his, his actual uh uniform right like bringing out a lot of those textures will go a long way toward selling the the miniature especially in a big scale like this so there you go uh hope that helps okay timothy uh and basically here here he's got his putrid blight king uh looking for any advice or additional improvement sure so it's going to be two things jump out at me about this. One, when we're doing uh, an alternate skin tone like this, which I think is perfectly fine and fun, of the green, we still need to have our same tonal variation coming up to, like, again, I would use some kind of pale, weird, you know, pale fleshes for your highlights because that'll feel appropriate and sickly. Uh, but also then having deeper shadows, bringing in some purple tones into the shadows, something like that. Uh, as this is Nurgle, when it gets to things like the metal and the, uh, like, so the bell and the steel and things that he's got, these should be portrayed as weathered because they are portrayed as weathered. The sculpt told you they're weathered, right? By having these big pits and points where this, they, that literally is coming from being rusted out and stuff like that. So we need to work in those brown tones, orange tones, stuff like that. Uh, on the copper, we want to work in that verdigree, the turquoise, the blue green, stuff like that to make that more visually compelling and interesting and, and richer so there you go okay uh sam king uh basically looking for a couple things how to create enough contrast in the middle shadow areas such as the stomach area without going uh as bright as the highlights in the foreground areas like the face the wings in particular how to fade still out without blotching uh and how the texture on the bone came out sure <clears throat> So, on the wings, my best advice is go watch any of the videos I have on wings um, because you, you can just stipple the living heck out of them, but you want to use a relatively dry paint or, or you can use a wash, but just work most of it off there and you can stipple color out or stipple wash in to create shadow. But in general, wings get brighter towards the center where it's stretched and then the, where the flesh kind of bunches up, it's near there, it's darker. Where more light is passing through, they become brighter. Now, as to the, you know, sort of mid-tone in there, the key is, yeah, you just want to, yeah, like, it's a it's volumetric highlights, right? So the this top area should have more of the highlight color in more spaces than the chest. 
but you can also control that by pushing shadows deeper. So this area of his torso down here, you can't see it, I'm off camera, but you know, down here under his sort of chest cavity, you could push the shadows deeper as well. If you can't brighten the brights, then deepen the shadows, right? And that will also get you there. Having a lot more darkness here under his tail, which is very, that, that this whole area here is very hidden from the light, right? So we could create some much deeper shadow areas here. Uh, and that would really sell the effect of, again, by making all of this darker, this would seem brighter. We don't have to get there just by brightening, right? Uh, so now finally on the bone. Yeah, the bone sells to me. It's good. Good striations, good structure. I like it. You know, it's good. Yeah, I like the texture in the bone. I think you did a good job. There you go. Cool stuff, Sam. Very nice. Okay. Uh, this is such a beautiful piece. I really love this. Uh, Joseph Anthony Ferrandez, uh, so basically he said, uh, he called this piece The Sadness, dedicated to all of our loved ones who are no longer with us, uh, and it's really wonderful, so I just, this is a really cool piece. 3D modeled in Oculus Medium and printed on his Elegoo Mars, which I assume is a 3D printer, I don't know enough about 3D printers. Um, so, and, and you, you, so you name some things here, like, I'm, I'm not 100% satisfied with all the picks now. Things like the grass tufts I should have painted, not just stuck to the base. The gray robot needs a lot more blending to smooth it out. And I think some environment color should be reflected on him. Uh, things like the ground and the bushes, not just the ambient light. Um, yep, that's exactly the, uh, th like, literally, that's exactly the feedback I would give you. So you already know all your next steps. You don't need me to tell you. So instead, I just want to share this piece with everybody because I really think it's still wonderful. Like, in the heart shape as it is with this nature contrasting this here's another form of contrast using the robots amongst nature and this one robot with this little owl uh very sad at his robot friend with his flower to remember him i mean this is like this is such a great piece man like yes you could do all those things you said and should okay so perfectly fair but compositionally and just like narratively the way you have the little robot's head hanging and all this stuff, it's just it's just great. It's just absolutely great. So, yes, do all those things, but this is such a wonderful piece, Joseph. I really want to thank you for sharing. I this this is great. So, thank you. Okay. Uh Reinhardt, uh after painting Valdor a few months back, uh this was his next adventure. Uh Looking for critiques on the true metallic metal, the basing, and the face with uh, with Rogel Dorn here. Uh, so, let's start with the uh, true metallic. Uh, yeah, I think it looks nice. Uh, let's see, just taking it all in. Yeah, I think it's good. I think we could... Um, yes, this is the, uh, the previous guy. There you go for comparison. So, I think it's good. I think we could have a few more bright spots of silver in just a few places to really pop kind of the high highlights of the gold out where it's catching the light. As I always show, like, you know, when I, whenever I, like, I've got my highly polished, my ring here, and you can see there's like this light spot right there where it's hitting the light that's right above it, right? It's just a few pieces like that. Overall, though, I think the shading is really good here. I think you've nailed that. You, I've seen you do a lot of work on this, and I think you're, you're there. A couple of these elements might use some darker lines separating them, but on the most part, I think that's fine. The face, uh, I don't have a super zoom in on the face, so it's a little hard to tell. Uh, but I think maybe it could be probably smoothed out a little bit, I think is what's jumping out at me. I'd need a little bit closer zoom up to tell you for sure. Now, as to the base itself, uh, the other Marine down there with his, like, the, the helmet and this the broken guy here, um, they look like they could be a little bit smoother in the application of their paint, uh, as opposed to him, they look kind of rough. Uh, as far as the colors and stuff go, I think that's fine. You've worked in some red tones. A little more green down here could help as well, just to kind of offset against him. You do have some green tones up in the armor, which I really like. So just some more light green tones here, because unless this world is super dry, there would be rain, and hence there would be some kind of moss or something. Some kind of organic life growing. Uh, I like the red tones and stuff worked in, so I think that's good. But yeah, that's my feedback. Okay, Daniel. Uh, first diorama and made it for an online painting competition. Uh, trying to achieve a night atmosphere with the ghosts entering into the light from the shadows. Feedback on the lighting effect would be appreciated. 
Sure. So I think this is a really cool effect. This is obviously some Malifaux figures. I, I have all these. I've painted all these. I want to start here saying I, I like the the uh, pattern you put on her. I think that's really nice. I think my biggest piece of feedback is probably just uh, refinement is your, your big challenge. So I think the light works, except that she is not shadowed enough in the appropriate places. So if she's under such a strong light, like you're capturing this bright light coming in like this from her, then some areas here and on this side of her face and this side of her nose and this under her arm and the side of her leg, those would be in deeper shadow. So there'd be more um, cold tones there to oppose that shadow. Um, that's the thing that jumps out at me the most. Beyond that, it's just refinement, right? Like uh, some of the blends need to be kind of smoothed down, things like that. But for the, for the most part, I think the effect, which is what you're really going for, does it sell? And yes, I, I think it does. Uh, so... There you go. Cool stuff. Ah, good old Pandora. Okay. So, Matthew Young. Uh, overall feedback appreciated, but he's got a specific question. What's the right color for the blue orbs? The answer is orange. Uh, because you've used copper and you have this very orange color, and so setting blue against the blue there like you did doesn't actually help it pop off any. If those things were orange, they would contrast, and they could be a very saturated orange, like that's a saturated blue, and they would pop off a lot better. Um, beyond that, the biggest piece of feedback I see is you want to make sure when you're working with metallics like this that you have nice dark lines getting in there with a good ink and making sure, like especially I see in places like the arm and stuff like that, that you've got nice dark lines separating these elements. Same with the highlights. The metals need to come up a little more, be shiny. We want to take more control of the light. You can go watch the like how to do true metallic uh, metal video that I did uh, in a non-metallic style. Uh, so the, there's many of those on my on my channel, um, but specifically you could go watch like I think it's 73, something in that range, and uh, and that'll help you out. So cool stuff. Okay. Uh, next up, Chris, first submission, getting back into the hobby after a couple of decades out, looking to push himself to high tabletop standard, hoping for general feedback and areas to improve on. Sure. So, like much of what I've said this time, the, the answer is very simple. It's going to be in tonal variation. I started purposely on the color so we could go to the black and white. This is all gray. This is all gray. This is all gray. This is all gray. Right? Like, a lot of this is just the same color. When you switch to black and white, if it's all the same color, you haven't gone far enough. Right? Go back and look at the black and white of the very first uh, model that was submitted, that orc. You know, who also has a very sort of green and purple thing going on. Different places, but, you know, different kind of color layout, but similar color scheme. And you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's going to be my big challenge to you. I think what you want to work on is uh, just working your, your, your blending and your contrast to really pop that up. You're working with purple here, which is a tough color. We can see a lot of the edge lines. Go watch my Exploring Colors Purple video, and that'll help you out as far as understanding... Um, kind of what that, uh, what that, you know, how to get your purple smooth because that's what's happening here. Purple is a very difficult color to work with and it gets blotchy and it's hard to smooth out. So watch Exploring Colors Purple and uh, also go watch the attached video on increasing your contrast and your tonal variation in value. Okay, Bill Robertson, first mini where he really pushed himself in a long time. Uh, consistent light source and non-metallic metal having a critique applied from the perspective of competition painting. Sure. Okay. So competition painting. All right. So first thing that jumps out at me is cleanliness. Um, things like the, uh, this is rough right here and here and here, here, you know, like all this stuff needs to be super clean when you're, when you're working with competition painting like you want to make sure all these lines are really sharply separated with dark shadows and stuff like that okay now as to the consistent light source it's like same with the face the individual elements of the face aren't really we're not respecting all the volumes as sharply as we could be there um so the non-metallic like the non-metallic doesn't sell for me and part of the reason, because as we, we've got this sort of, this doesn't really feel like light. It feels like he's hot. Okay. And that's because of things like these horns are just bone. This is just this color. These skulls are just this color. Like if you're going to do an extreme light source like this, 
Like, on him, you've told me this is a very close, bright light, almost like he's standing in a torch, okay? And it's casting this yellow glow on him. Where's the yellow here? Why isn't uh, this in heavy shadow that's in, like, a deep brown, right? And the other side here in bright yellow, right? Wha I, that kind of thing. So the why is the, the red over here? still quite bright and saturated red when if it's outside of light it should be desaturated okay uh so those are the kind of things that that jump out at me if we're talking about competition we when we're going to do a bright directional light source like this it has to influence everything the non-metallic has to turn yellow it's not going to look steel colored anymore if we're in like a torchlight it's going to look mostly orange and yellow right same with the horns same with the fur and the shield and the skulls and everything it's going to it's going to impact all of that if we're in this orange yellow light then that's going to be the tone and it's going to set everything like with the strength that you gave me here with those highlights this guy is 5 feet from a torch and everything is that color okay so as well you want to think about the shadows that work there now as to the non-metallic metal the color is true but then we also need to make sure we're paying attention to things like reflected light so let's say we've got a strong light source right here it's going to come down. It's going to hit the ground here, bounce up. What happened here? This would not be dark. If it's metal, it's reflective. Reflective means it's reflective, meaning again, it's catching all the light at a higher level than what other stuff. If this was like cloth, some dark cloth, maybe I'd buy that. Okay. But this light's going to come down right here and go boop, boop, and hit this, this spear, and I should see reflected lights here. I should see a yellow light down at this tip, where if this is coming in, it's going to smash right along that edge right so uh yeah that's my advice bill i hope that helps that seemed harsh i i hope not i hope i didn't make you feel bad or anything like that certainly not the goal um but if i was evaluating it for competition this is the kind of stuff i would give you feedback on so well, there you go i i hope that helps give you some direction uh and and thoughts for for exploring this i think this is a really good thing to explore this is awesome that you're going this direction and trying this stuff i love it you're taking big swings and that's how we learn Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, Paladin. All right, Paladin. Buddy, I love this community. I love you for submitting this. You cannot write me this kind of a novel, my friend. 80 submissions. This is too much. You got to boil it down for me, man. Like, again, I get you're going for something complicated, uh, but this is a lot. Um, okay. So, like, yeah, this is a lot to take in, man. Like, you've got eight questions in here. <laughs> and then a lot of explanation to unpack it. So, instead, like, your, your questions down here are relatively straight. Thoughts on suggested ways to tweak the scheme? How is the tonal variation so far? Anything else stand out to pay attention to? Okay. I appreciate you're trying to make it directed and clear enough, but we've got a... Brevity is the soul of wit. Okay? Now... Let's talk about the color scheme. So I get what you're going for uh, with this kind of almost sort of reflection situation of the light. Um, the thing that jumps out at me in that regard is I'm not sure the yellow works here. Uh, I understand the need for balance and that's we've got a lot going on here. The challenge is this yellow here in the shield Right? Where they're all kind of together. Where's, yeah, there you go. There's the shot of them kind of... The theory of them all lined up, as it were. Right? Um, I feel like it will work if we desaturate and smooth things. So, like, I'm not sure if the yellow is meant to be paint on their shields or something else. Uh, if it's meant to be actually just paint on their shields, the challenge is you made it look kind of like light... And so it's kind of throwing me because it feels like it's some kind of reflection slash anti-reflection there, right? And I feel like if that's the case, it should be more smooth. Um, the, uh, yeah, so the shield names and dark central boss pattern colors combo designed to try for a Fraser wilcox esque related swaying effect when there's enough of them. 
I'm not sure what any of that means. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't know how well it'll work. Although. Let's just look it up, shall we? All right. Let's figure out what he's talking about. Frazier, Wilcox, swaying effect. The color-dependent Frazier-Wilcox illusion. Holy Moses, man. Oh, where they feel... This thing feels like it's moving, even when it's not. Like, if you sort of your eyes look aside... Yeah, it makes it feel like it's moving for a second. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, that's going to be nearly impossible to achieve. I'm going to warn you right now. Because you don't, like, what makes that effect sell is that you can control the viewing angle in a two-dimensional image. Right? And here, I'm not sure that that's really going to happen. Now, that being said the color scheme of like the purple blue and yellow is fine um it will work the and, and i like some of the bright contrast and things here honestly what i would do is i would kind of not worry about trying to achieve a like uh a crazy eye effect you know and just go like let's just nail the fundamentals here okay um don't shoot from half court when you want to increase your free throw percentage. Uh, so, because what I really see as the opportunities are is if we smooth out the yellow to purple on the shield and make it look reflective in that way, like you did with your sword, that's actually a really cool effect. I like that idea of that color scheme being sort of the reflected light on the shield. And then I would actually bring some purple back down in here on this side as well kind of smooth this out, make this more of a transition, make this more of a transition, that kind of a thing. Now, as to the yellow piece then in the center uh, of this thing, I would honestly still uh, probably more turn that, uh, probably turn this into the, the mauve that you've got, the, the sort of uh, purplish tone. Yeah, I think plum is probably the right answer. Um, I would turn that into the plum and I would get that more desaturated because the yellow is so bright. Again, a, yellow is a very powerful color. We need to be careful with yellow. Don't put yellow in a place that at the bottom of the miniature where it's so dominant that people, like your eye is just going to be drawn here toward the bottom. I understand part of this is covered by the shield, right? But it's still there. It's still drawing a lot of attention. So the my, my basic answer is... This would look better in the mauve and make yellow kind of your pop color. Make it a thin band here. I like the gem. Put it a little bit into the blade. Put it a little bit into this thing on the top. Good. Nice pop color, especially up at the top, drawing attention around here. Aces, because when the shield arm is here, then you'll have this nice triangle of yellow light drawing attention up to the top, and I think it'll work fine. So, um, yeah, that's going to be my my big advice for you. I Not to smash your dreams, my friend, but... You know, that's we're we're trying to we're trying to fly when we should still be walking. So that's my best advice. Okay. Alrighty. Next up, Dave Kinnenberg. Uh, so basically, looking for feedback on the non-metallic metal and anything else you see. Uh, sure. So I I did look this over. I love the armor. I love the the non-metallic metal steel. All of that is selling for me. That's working. The gold is not. It's the same thing I said back at the beginning. Many people have said this so far. Gold doesn't go far enough. doesn't have enough one and two. And it needs a little more five as well. More contrast. Your contrast on the steel is great. Your contrast on the gold needs to go farther. The other thing that jumps out at me is just the hair. Like, she has this big, beautiful hair. See everything I've already said about hair so far in this review, right? It should still have a halo of light. It should still have directional lighting, stuff like that factored into it, which it does not right now. So... There you go. Uh, hope that helps. Okay. Next up, uh, Tristan. Uh, okay, so basically he'd like advice on when you paint and highlight in true metallic, how do you place your highlights well without the shine of the metal messing you up? The key is you use matte inks to really control that light and make sure it's in the right place. Um, and you, uh, you, what, you use a lot of back and forth techniques. So we're going to see it when we go into this picture here. You can see the line, right, and these lines. 
What you want to do is you want to use a lot of stippling or wet blending or stuff like that or glazing back and forth. You can use 10 different blending techniques. It doesn't matter. But you keep working it back and forth over each other so that it gets really up in each other's business and gets smooth, right? And you introduce matte black ink to create your deep shadows and gain control of the light. That will stop the reflections from being out of your control. So that's that's the best answer. Um, I've got a couple different videos on this, some recently, so I would go check those out, watch them again, and you'll see how I kind of tackle the various elements of it. Um, actually, if you go watch like the um, the shading True Metallic Metal in a non-metallic style revisited, like maybe 165, I do it with gold, but it'll show you very much what I'm talking about in a wet blending way. Okay. Farron, Ogroid Myrmidon, just overall advice is appreciated mainly on the TMM. Sure. Uh, so, uh, the answer is more variation in it. See the same video as I've mentioned already. So 73 for, and the one I just mentioned, like 165. Um, that's going to be your, your answer there. Uh, do avoid this kind of direct overexposed lighting. Like, if I can see this shadow line, he's hit with too much light. Right, so you want to filter that light, point it slightly in a different direction. If you've got coffee filters in your house, just put a coffee filter over whatever this light is. That's all you need. Piece of paper. Paper towel. Like, you've got the tools. Just so that way the light gets softer. Now, uh, as to the other feedback and things I noticed, the horns, again, look kind of samey. Again, we want to pick out those elements, make sure they're visually distinct. Same thing with the hands and the fingies. Um, those look a little bit kind of like they're they're just kind of fading into darkness. It's cool having a, a color scheme on the Ogroid that fades out. GW did it. I know Trevarian did one. But he still worked highlights into the knuckles and stuff, right? It needs to come up and do a highlighted version of that alternative color. Same thing with the face. The face should be the center of attention. We don't have enough highlights and things in here drawing our eye in. So popping up the highlights on things like the top of the nose, the bridge of the eyebrows, the tops of the cheeks, that kind of stuff is where you want to go. Overall, I like the color scheme. I think the sort of pink to white scheme is really cool. I think you you executed on that really nicely. So I think that looks great. Okay, Jamie Foster. Uh, working on the use of color nuances here to add them to the Fain, the Cogs, and the Cloak. Feedback on whether the color va variations are working. Sure. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, yes, I think they are. I like that, that in there. I can see the, the hints of purple. I think, honestly, where we have some opportunity is in stuff like the hair, um, working in some color like that, uh, maybe a little bit more into the skin, maybe a little bit more into the sword, that kind of stuff. The contrast on the cloak and the, the additional colors, I think, work well. So I think all that's successful. I like the little bit of purple and stuff in the cogs. The steel still feels a little bit flat, uh, as does kind of the skin, and the hair feels like it could have a color worked into it as well. So that would be my best advice for you. But overall, this is super cool. Very neat fig. Neat execution. I like the extra colors in there. You're going the right direction. Okay. Nolan, feedback on tonal variation, blending, skin, face details. Sure. So the answer is, well, first off, we need to, you know, go back and watch my uh, how to paint eyes um, because we, we need to make sure that it's dark around the eyes like she's got that surprise look because that doesn't isn't there um we want to make sure we're still we're we're a lot farther on the tonal variation is the answer um the yellow is still very flat the pink is still very flat take a picture of this in black and white like you've seen some other people do like take a picture in color and then go to your phone and switch it to mono so it's black and white and you'll see that this whole thing looks gray okay um like we definitely need to push that a lot farther. If you look at, again, go watch the attached video. Go look at some of the ones where I've talked about them having the right amount of contrast and tonal variation in the skin and in the cloth, and you'll see kind of what that looks like. So, uh, but, I, but yes, the answer is we definitely need to be pushing that contrast up higher, especially on the pink, the yellow, the skin, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, Oh, boy. Uh, Mache. I'm going to take a swing at it and say that's it. Uh, he's doing this piece based on Hero, which I know exactly the scene you're talking about. I love this scene. Uh, even though Hero was, like, lesser Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragons, and I would rank it behind that and House of Flying Daggers, but, you know, that's okay. Whatever. Uh, still an awesome scene. Um, 
Questions are, is the composition visually interesting? Is this painting style interesting and appealing? Does this diorama succeed as inspired by? So let's take a look. I want, I want to get to the big zoom out shot. There you go. Okay. Nope. That's the, uh, We'll leave it on the video and just have that in the background. There you go. That's fine. Okay. So the number one thing here is the water is a little too still. So like this, these ripples have been kicked up, but I'd love to see slightly more ripples. Like water's never this still, even on a still lake like this in, in the movie, there'd be like slight variations in the water, especially where she's kicked. If she's kicking a wave of the size, there'll be little ones kind of going out in front of it. Um, I think that you also didn't need this much space. So diorama type of thing, you're always wanting to tell the most amount of story in the least amount of space. That is the goal. So this should be cut and this should be cut. We need about like shave two inches off of each end of that. That Okay. Um, now, you know, the other things still apply of basically things that I've said already, like tonal variation in the skin and the dress and stuff like that. I think that all works compositionally i think it's great i think the blue and the the cold sort of wintry theme that she's in against the water very much sets an environmental tone and uh, and that sells so i think that that's fine we just need to push the the variation in all aspects and the contrast up to make the piece more visually compelling so there you go hope that helps okay great uh gurgly great great yeah sure why not uh, here is the breeder of the word game Nemesis. The opinion on the red OSL. It's coming from a light source on the front of the figure like an emergency spaceship. Yeah, sure. Okay, so here's the issue. It doesn't go far enough. Like, you have this second green thing here. I understand. But, like, let's look at him from the front. This is a light in front of him, right? And none of this or here is at all touched by that light. Now, I understand it's a weak light. This part here, like, why does this not have some of the light on it, right? Like, this, we can tell the whole story from this image, right? Because everything that I can see right now, if this is, if this photo is where the angle of the light is coming from, then everything here should have some infusion of this color into it. Even if it's weak, but then it would still be, any kind of highlight would be in that orange tone, not in that cold blue, extremely soft ambient light tone. Okay, so like light doesn't just hit this angle and stop. It would bounce up off of here. Like see all this? This would bounce down. Light bounces off of everything. So you need to kind of like look and see where is this light going to softly diffuse. Light isn't, we, we think of it like a lot of times when people learn OSL, they think like what I'm trying to do is this is my light source. I'm going to make a beam coming out of it. And if it hits this thing, then this is lit. If it doesn't hit this thing, it's not lit. But that's not how light works, right? Light is softly diffused over everything. It bounces off of every surface. So when it's coming from an, an area, you want to think of it more like... It, it's easier if you think of it like a wave. I mean, light is both a particle and a wave. But if you think of it like a wave crashing over something and flowing around it to some degree, right? Very hard lines will create shadows. But then that's when we put in secondary reflections of the warm light because it bounced off of, you know, nearby skin or something like that. Okay. So when I come to, to this piece, I think this here area is more successful. You deepen the shadows. I think you could go deeper, honestly, because this is a soft ambient light, barely lighting something against a uh, something bright. So like this could be more in shadowed is my answer and really rely on a subtle very weak blue light back here as bright as this is it tells me this should not be having this effect okay so there you go i hope that helps okay next up uh amy brings us the uh a chaos rhino uh said very new to this level of freehand feedback on how you can improve it feel the capture of the second edition chaos codex sure so first of all, Amy, you mentioned, like, I could have done a couple of these things. Uh, yep, you could have. <laughs> My, what I, I'll say to you what I say to everybody. Anytime you think that something is a case, that you've got a gut feeling that something's there, right? You're usually right. Trust your gut. Now, okay, that aside, right? Uh, let's talk about your edge highlights. You want to go back with the black and thin. Some of those out. Some of these are a little too thick. 
So you just go back with the black. It's the, the when you're doing this kind of like edging, it's not just a key of of applying it. It's applying it and then applying back the other color to make them nice and thin. Okay. Uh, now, as to the actual freehand, I dig it. I dig all this freehand. Again, probably some of it needs to be cleaned up. Like I noticed on some of this, we feel like see how this isn't kind of quite a straight arrow and and things like that. Just little tiny inconsistencies. You just want to make sure you're going back, paying attention to those things, and really just, you know, making sure each one is clean and sharp. Now, this thing on top, this is really cool. Uh, this is great. You did a great job of capturing this from the codex. I mean, this looks fantastic. Wonderful interpretation of that original codex uh, image onto the top of this thing. So I think this is great. Um, it looks like you were real clean, real sharp here. So I really like how this one came out. I think you nailed this. Okay. All right, but yeah, great job. So I think that, you know, like some of your hazard stripes, they aren't kind of as clean as they, quite as clean as they could be. And that's just a matter of, again, going back and making sure very, those that final step of sharpening those lines and making sure they're all nice and clean. Okay, uh, Mga, uh, first time you joined the event. Well, welcome. Uh, did your best on this mango swig, but I find a lack of visual interest. Feedback on how to pop it up. Sure. So I think this is really nice. Like, I think you did a really good job with this mangler squig. The elements that jump out to me are like the teeth. Actually, here we go. We'll do this with the black and white. This lower one, you did really interesting teeth. This top one, they're really boring. I'm not sure why that was. Maybe we just didn't want to do it because it's a lot of bones. <laughs> um, but I think the squig himself, I like the color. I think that really pops with the blue lips. I think one of the ways you could do it is having a little bit of blue as your shadow color on this bone, like work it in there, work it in here. Um, you could push the highlight up in this area of the face even a little bit higher uh, to really make sure that that's interesting and, and, and visually compelling. Uh, but overall, I think this is really good stuff. I, I like the lower squig more than I like the top one. It feels like this one you went all the way on. Like I, the yellow feels a little brighter down here. The texture on the teeth, the texture on the lips and stuff like that. I, I like that a lot. Um, but I think that's probably what I would say. Things like the leather, you could do add a little that they're holding onto. That strap could be a little more textured, something like that. But uh, but on the whole, I think this is good stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't I think you've got a good amount of pop in here. So I think the bone is a big opportunity. Um, maybe adding a little more of like the yellow into the goblin's cloak back here. Uh, so that like he has some some flames or checks or dags or something, and I think that could those could be other little touches that'll make it pop out. Okay, next up, Sean Rogers, uh, Cipher Lord, uh, trying non-metallic metal glazing and getting good contrast. Sure, interested in feedback on the flesh and the overall balance of the scheme. Uh, so the flesh is flat. I mean that's that's the short answer. So like we can see it from here, right? We just there's a little bit of shadow. You're not you're not totally flat, but we need to go farther. So we go back to this one. This is a nice way to look at it. We need to see those soft red tones, purple tones, stuff like that more in there. A little bit more of, like, I understand you probably want him to be a little more pale. He's not exactly, like, super tan. I'm good with that. Um, but those soft tones like that can work worked into those shadows is really going to help make him feel more alive. Okay? So... Uh, now, overall composition, I think he's great. Uh, I think your non-metallic metal is looking pretty sharp. The helmet needs to come up a little higher, especially on the, the light catch points, like the top of the helm. When we look here, we need to get into a little more of the white, uh, just very lightly. Uh, but on the whole, I think this is coming together really well, Sean. So, yeah, I'd say pop that flesh up a little more, push it, and get in a little more, uh, add in a little more tonal variation through variation of hue, and you'll be in a good place. Okay, Robin Winter, uh, Sepulchral Guard. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, Dunn's practice for heavy, heavily corroded metals and bone. Looking for critique on the metals and how to make the models pop a bit more. Sure, so I think we could add in some more, like this guy doesn't have a rusty weapon, um, but just adding in, like you've got, you really went all out with, on some of these, where it's just like, this is everything all together. You don't necessarily need like the the copper corrosion color and the rust corrosion corrosion color. I know like Darren Latham did a video where he used both of them, but the key is if you're going to do that, they have to be very much in balance. 
So the dominant color should be the rust, and then you should be using the teal just in like the low shadows or something to just basically add as reflected light, re visual interest in the shadows. Um, these upper spears, it doesn't feel like they were done in the same way. Like this one doesn't feel like it has anything going on at all. So I would also say that with the rust, you want to work in a lot of different stuff. Again, check out the videos I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Iron Jaws video will be very helpful. Again, 103 to 105, or the earlier Rusted Weapons video, Rusted Corroded Weapons, that's in somewhere in the early, somewhere in the first hundred. I don't know. There's a playlist. Um, and I think that'll really help because what you want to get is a larger variation of tone <coughs> throughout there. That is to say, like, some soft browns, then some stronger browns, then some deep browns, then some brown oranges, then some bright oranges around the edges and where rust would really collect, right? So the key is to have a, a, a like a logic to it, right? Like here, it just it's scattered, which is appropriate. You want it kind of random, but there's too much teal. There's not enough rust in the pits where it would be, those are pits because they've rusted and fallen out. That's how pits get in metal. There was a flaw in the metal, water got in, it corroded, it turned to rust, it felt flaked off. That's where that pit comes from, right? So that would be the most corroded area, right? So there you go. Hope that helps. Cool stuff. Look forward to the future submissions. Okay, Robin decided to give his his uh, zinch a bit of a rest, playing with a skaven, looking for uh, feedback on the skin tone. Uh, okay. All right, and how to predict that and how to get the lighting going on it. Sure. So this is a weird figure. And, you know, for the most part, like, I do hate this Rad Ogre so much. Um, for the most part, I think it's okay. Uh, I Like, I don't think you're, you're I don't think you're bad. Actually, that, that sounded way too harsh. Sorry. I think it's good. Uh, I think you could go farther. And where we're actually lacking is the highlights. Okay. So you asked where to place the highlights. I mean, it's a volumetric highlight, right? So your light is coming from some direction, let's say above. And that is going to mean that the brightest lights are here on top of this muscle and here on top of this muscle and here on top of this part of his head and here's part of his ear, right? Like it's hold it up to a bright light and that'll give you a rough sketch of where the brightest lights should fall. I think you've got some good reds and tones like that. I think we honestly just need to push the highlights up. That's probably my best advice for you uh, when it comes to the skin, getting those actual higher highlights in there. So, I hope that helps. Okay, next up. Uh, uh, Jonas? Jonas? I don't know. We'll say John, Jonas. We'll say Jonas. Uh, tried to focus on texture in the cloth and making the plasma more interesting, but also appreciate general feedback if something else comes to mind. Sure. So, we had looked at the, the main guys before. All right. Plasma is definitely brighter. It's good. Smooth it out a little more, a little more light blue, things like that. Uh, the robes look a lot more interesting and textured this time. So my next challenge for you is going to be on the metal. Your, your steel is still rather washed and flat, especially around the weapon. We want to be focusing more in on restoring some of those highlights. Adding some different tones to it would also help. Getting some colors in there. You could work some blue tones into that metal. It would help balance out the bright plasma reactor. And things like that. So that's going to be my next challenge for you. But I think we definitely met it on like the plasma and the the leather. So I think that's looking a lot better. So yeah, great, great, and great implementation of that feedback. Okay, Tibo, Tibo, sorry, sorry, Tibo. Uh, basically, this is he was supposed to be in attendance at his first uh, golden demon, and this was going to be his unit. So. What could you improve and perhaps, and perhaps you know, prepare them for further down the road? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think these guys look good. Um, I really like them. I think you did a really nice job with them. So the biggest thing I'm going to say for you is just smoothing and refinement. So like on his helmet, in some of these blends here on the copper is where I noticed it. Some in the silver here. Um, I think you know where we go from the purple to the blue. Uh, some of those are a bit stark. The armor looks fantastic. I love the texture. I love the implementation of the corrosion. I think that looks really nice. Honestly, my biggest piece of feedback for you has to do with just smoothing out those blends, refining it, making sure this silver pops up all the way, maybe adding some, some 
uh, other colors down in the shadows of the metal, maybe working a little bit of brown into the deep shadows, right? That kind of thing. This is old, worn, rusted stuff. So it shouldn't necessarily make sense that it has real bright to dark, just gray only, like fear gray only weapons. They should have a color. And in general, that'll be clean equals and clean and cold equals blue. Dirty and, and old equals yellow or brown or sepia or something like that. So work that kind of into the tones there. But overall, this is great stuff. I think you really nailed it on the armor. Uh, I think the color scheme itself is fantastic. I love the purple to the blue. I think that's that's freaking great. Uh, we just need to smooth those two together some. Okay. Uh, Mart, uh, new painter has been enjoying the hobby. Uh, love some general advice on the miniature. Uh, sure. So he is rather small. Uh, my first advice is probably grab some bigger things to paint. <laughs> it's really tough to learn on stuff this small, I'll be honest. Um, now, as to what to fix, first off, make sure you do, uh, other than the metallics, make sure you're matting your stuff down. Reds are naturally glossy. I can see the gloss. You generally want to make sure things are matte. Pick up some AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. That'll really help a lot into getting that done. Two, make sure your elements are well separated. So I'll give you an example here on the ear. We just kind of ran red to here and green to here, but there's no dark line in between. There would be a separation there. Make sure there's a nice dark line there. Those kind of things make paint jobs feel... Paint jobs being matte and paint jobs being clean and well separated between light lines and dark lines is what makes paint jobs feel clean, okay? The next big piece of advice for you I have is just on tonal variation. It's the same thing I've said many times in this review uh, where if anybody ever played a drinking game where they drank every time I said that, they would be dead, uh, so please don't. Uh, but, you know, again, popping up, taking the skin, adding more tones. You want to run that full gamut. If you watch the attached video I've got, it'll help you out understanding exactly what I'm talking about there as far as light and shadow and how to get that, that extra contrast in the mini. Okay, Lee, uh, first post in the PMP monthly review. Felt brave this month. Uh, so, converting over the Sisters of Battle. Uh, and so, he says he knows he needs the blue and gold of the wings to have more tonal variation. Good. Excellent. Uh, also didn't realize the wings were so distracting until I fully assembled it. What would you recommend uh, to turn the Menomina Muppet Pink Purple into something less red and destroying? First of all, Menomina. Okay, anybody out there who in your head went do 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 do, you're you're a good person. All right, so the answer here is thankfully very simple, Lee. Uh, by the way, I love the color scheme. These are great wings to put on top of. My, I also use different wings for my uh, seraphim, so I'm down with that. Um, but the uh, I didn't use these, but these are a great replacement. So um, the answer is thankfully pretty simple. You have a primary light up here going in a shadow, and then a secondary reflection. Let's play around with that a little different. Let's move the darker part up here. Okay, so push your dark up. Leave your pink in a smaller area because this is the eye-catching part. Let's bring that darker purple up a little bit. And then let's take this and bring the lower part out to like the same blue as her armor. So fade from this dark purple into the sort of blue steel here. Not actually metal paint, but you know what I'm saying. This kind of color. <clears throat> um, down into a white at the tips. So then she's haloed on both sides by this blue white and then you have that bright tone just kind of in the middle it'll make it much more in line because you shrink out the bright magenta it'll make it much more in line with the magenta on the uh clothing that she's wearing the actual like robe and uh will help bring the whole thing in balance but overall i love the conversion i think she's super cool so great stuff all right greg uh saurus tester generally happy with a few exceptions uh still figuring out glazing with miniature ghost tints over Alcohol gold going for a quicker scheme, but one that still pops on the table. Sure. So I think that if you're if you're having trouble, ghost tints can be really tough to glaze with um, over there. So you might also want to look into some Dollar Rowney FW inks. Those could really help. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice for you is make sure we get a little more texture onto the edge of the scales. You can do that with like a quick, very soft, as I mentioned earlier, dry brush. Take a nice makeup brush, work almost all the paint off. Just give them a real nice, light, light, light touch. Lots of strokes. Lots of strokes that you want almost no paint on there, and you're just going. Okay, there. We have our color. That's how long it should take you. Okay? Stuff like that, I think, would be really nice. But overall, I think if you're going for sort of a quick, fun scheme, tabletop standard, I think you're, you know, yeah, this will work fine for you. So there you go. I hope that helps, and uh, good stuff. Hope to see more. Okay, Adrian, uh, looking for general feedback, 
trying to get toward, toward a more competition level job. Sure. So I'm going to say the same thing I've said a couple times, which is we need to focus more on defining the individual elements because a lot of this just kind of bleeds together. So like the, the, the lines and the shades that are separating everything is kind of messy in some points. You see how like your see this line here, how it's kind of fat and here, right here, 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 right? We don't want this kind of messiness that makes it overall seem more, more cluttered. We want to have nice, sharp, well-defined, dark to light to dark. Same with things like around the eyes, around the hand, around the sword. Now, looking at the black and white, you can see that we've still got a lot of room to run on tonal variation on the blue. Like, you're, you're doing better. You can see here, right? So let's go here on the side. This looks a little better, right? Because I can see some here. But we've definitely got more deeper shadows we could put in here. We don't need to run all the way to non-metallic or something but we can still push that contrast a little more. You have this plate here in the middle, like oppositely defined for some reason. I'm not sure why. That if, if light's coming from one of these directions, it's going to come from one of these directions. You don't need to, like you you out cleverage yourself there. Um, either the light's coming from here or the light's coming from here. We don't, like it's not, sometimes we do that on a sword, but that's because they're, they're at completely different angles, right? And so one is hitting the reflecting light from the ground and one is hits, catching the light from above. Um, I think that the, the biggest distraction here is kind of the purple peachy tone that you've got. Um, it doesn't feel like it's well-defined, especially with some of this is the sculpt working against you, by the way. Um, so like if you're going to use that, it needs to be very clearly boxed in to where like in the eyes, for example, I would need a dark line around it on the sword. I want like dark lines separating that pinky purple from whatever the sword is made of. Right. So make sure those elements are all crafted to be individual and separate and i think that'll really help make the paint job look more clean and sharp okay all right christopher uh first time submitting welcome uh so looking for uh some feedback on uh getting this guy he's just looking to paint up uh it says paint to a display standard okay that's still very high uh but all right uh still have them usable in games absolutely what can you deliver a practice on sure so i've got an easy answer for you i looked these guys over earlier so the easy answer here is um the your texture on the shell on their carapace looks great where we're let down is with the skin the skin and the brain is far too samey um and you can see everything you need to see in this black and white picture again I love when people submit to me the black and white because it makes it so much easier to say what I'm talking about. This is all the same color. That's it. Like, it needs something. It needs more value contrast. And as a point of reality, when we go back to the color, it needs more variation of hue, right? So red tones, purple tones, it's still a fleshy sack thing. Same with the, the brain, ultimately, right? Uh, so that would be my, my next thing I would absolutely direct you toward for working on there, okay? All right, Ryan. Uh, Ryan had a lot of questions. Okay. Trying some OSL. Uh, the fingers weren't carved out. How do you handle it? Faces. Uh, sure. So let's chat, tackle this in order. OSL, I would go watch the OSL video again. Because, like, uh, part of the trick to this is it's going to cast a roughly even light. It's also going to cast a shadow. Generally, you don't want to try to reflect a heavy OSL over red. It's not going to sell real well. You want it to reflect over something neutral. Okay, so that's just number one. You're not you're not doing yourself any favors, basically. Two, um, uh, how do you properly OSL fire on top of red? You don't glaze. It's you build in each of the points of highlight, like the yellow and the orange, strongly with paint, and then you bring in the cloth through the red glaze back. Okay. But then again, you also need to then shade to something cold away from the fire. So that red needs to integrate like a purple color, which would be bringing in blue, right? And have heavy shadows. All of these, when, okay, when you cast a light, you, you create shadows. This would be darkly shadowed. This would be really darkly shadowed. Every line here, everything, his belt under here, all of this, all of that would have deep, deep lines of shadow in it, right? Now, as to the eyes, again, same thing. Yes, you should never see white on either side of the eye. Eyes don't work like that, okay? This, you can see that because I'm surprised. Whoa, when I look at you normally, okay? 
You cannot see the white on either side of my eyes. Moreover, there is a lot of darkness around my eye. Not just because I'm tired and there's all these like rings around my eyes. But also, look at this dark line around my eyelids. Right? That's what makes eyes not look like cartoony and surprised. You want lots of darkness, you want eyelids, you want that defined, and you should not have any white showing above or below, unless you're unless you're trying to do something very specific, like somebody looking down like that, right? How do you do fingers? Black line. You've got to build it back in. You've got to paint freehand lines back in between the fingers. It shouldn't actually be black. It should be like a deep purple or something, but that's what you want to do when you want to recreate the shadow to highlight, like the bottom of the finger is going to be darker and it's going to go up to the top. You know, what, are, what does that look like? Paint that. Right? Okay. Uh, faces. So, basically, like, um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of faces. Uh, I have several videos that include me painting faces. I'll certainly do more in the future. Um, Cujo has a great video on painting faces, honestly. That's what I would direct you to. Cujo did a really, really great video on painting faces that I loved. So you could go check that out if you just search for Cujo Painting Faces. You'll you'll find it. Um, and, um, yeah, and that, that'll probably help you out. But the key is, again, like, just Google real images of people's faces and look at, like, the color, as I talked about earlier, right? There's a lot of highlights here. There's a lot of reds. The, the traditional old master way was this is yellow, this is red, this is blue on a male figure. On a, on a female, it's this is yellow, this is red. And there's a T-zone here that's hot. Like, faces are a huge, huge thing. But you want to create more value, more red in the cheeks, more shadow, more shadow under the eyes, around here, that kind of thing. <coughs> now, um, as to the what to varnish, uh, ultra matte over the whole thing. You don't, you don't want anything satin over an OSL effect. OSL needs to be more matte than anything else. Because if the light reflects on its own, then it's not OSL anymore. Right? that light that's reflected is going to interfere with where you have told me, the viewer, there is light. Part of what you're trying to do when you do OSL is you're creating the light. You're telling me, the viewer, this is the, where the light is. If I pick up the figure and I see a bright white reflection from the light above it right here, that's where the light is, not where you painted it. Okay? So, there you go. Hope that helps, Ryan, and gives you some stuff to think about there. Okay, uh, long... Uh, first review submission, second finished painted miniature. Oh, welcome. Okay, great. Uh, overall color scheme. Yeah, I think that the overall color scheme is fine, but you need to balance it out more. So going to the yellow here is cool. We just need to do the same with the ghosts. Again, anytime we use super bright colors, like yellow, those have to be in balance. Anytime we use those highly saturated colors, they need to be up top there. So like bring the ghosts' faces up to that same yellow. It would snap this piece right into, into focus. By the way, you know what else it would do? Draw the attention up here to the head where you're trying to get attention, which is your number two question. How do you get this back in attention? Well, there's a couple things. One, you could have glowing yellow eyes, so that could be another place we could put the yellow. That would certainly draw the attention back up and help to balance it, right? You could brighten this up with a little more white or ivory under the sort of leather you're going for, and then, and have the OSL. You could do both, right? But you need the deep shadows. So again, go watch my video on glowing eyes if you want to see how to do that. Um... And he's mentioned that you try to do the smoke as I guide, like sort of as a wet blend. Uh, but the wet paint does not stay in one place and kind of mix, mash, flow in each other. It's too thin then. You need to work thicker um, to get that wet blending then is the answer. If the paint is moving that much, it's too thin. So there you go. And then how to make a clean paint job. The answer is, uh, again, as I've talked about many times, a separation of lines. So if uh, here's an easy example. Let's go into the photo itself. See how your brown comes down here? That's dirty. See how this doesn't have like as much of a dark separation between it as it could? That's what makes it look dirty, right? So each of these elements needs to have like where the ropes go in. This should be generally dark around it. The rope should have some light right here on it coming out. If each of the elements feels deliberate, also, by the way, as I mentioned, the other thing that makes a clean paint job is a matte paint job. Yeah, I can see a lot of like satin here where things are still glossy. That makes things look unpolished because light starts bouncing into shadows. Like you hold it up and there's light in a shadow and it just looks weird. And your brain goes, something's wrong here. When you mat all that stuff out, that doesn't happen. Okay. So the clean alternation of dark and light, you know, make sure your paint job is nice and, and sort of, you know, cleaned up for just paint mistakes like that. And then run this up to be dark. And then we have the edge of this cloth light. Everything's matted, 
boom, that's going to go a long way and it's going to feel like a more clean paint job. So there we go, Long. I certainly hope that helps. With that, that brings us to the end of the month. So that was a long one. Um, we'll see how we get on uh, with the months to come. I don't know if I can keep doing 80 or 100 or whatever this ends up as in the future. So we'll see. Uh, we might. I might need to have like some kind of way to alternate this. But for now, it's cool. I do enjoy doing this very much. It's just it's also extremely exhausting. Um, just, I mean, like physically tiring, not like in any negative way. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted beautiful work. Everybody who submitted is absolutely brave. Uh, it's, you know, it's a big deal to have your stuff get evaluated publicly and, you know, talk about and being at, and asking somebody to help you find flaws. That is a measure of bravery. Uh, so very well done. Uh, that is excellent way to take it. That is an excellent way to take a step on your hobby journey. And I certainly hope that I've helped you do so. Um, you're all wonderful. You're all wonderful hobbyists. Thank you to everybody, whether it was your first or second mini or your thousandth or two thousandth. Um, you know, I, I want you to really uh, give yourself a pat on the back and raise your hand up. Go, go, go Judd Nelson from the end of the Breakfast Club. You did it. Excellent work this month. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you all very much out there for watching. Uh, and as always, if people who watch this have more questions or comments or things like that, feel free to throw those down in the comments below. If you want to join, again, link is down below. Please do answer all of the questions so we can approve you get in here. Uh, I like doing this once a month, but as always, the key is for you to give the, uh, your, the feedback is if you're a member of this community, please do give feedback when questions are asked, be positive, be helpful, be respectful of the fact that everybody is on a different point in their own journey. And, uh, and help them take their next step, whatever that is. Uh, that can just make someone's day. This community is built on positivity, on sharing, and I want to make sure we all keep that. And I see so much of that every day, and I love it. So please keep up all the great work. Thank you, everyone. Have a great, great, great rest of your, uh, your month, and uh, stay safe out there. Bye, everybody.